and then you, you tend to save you tend to save money in the long term because you're not going to buy it again. And yeah, it's just it seems to be more economical to go for a higher quality item. Uh, lighting is supported with the uh, lighting hanging kit. Is that Evolution Aqua still, or is that? Uh, yes, yeah. but they stop. They sort of stop doing that, so we get it from Aquatics now. Okay, and then the lighting is the Life Aqua Master Pro. Yep. Yeah. Uh, which is similar. You can see quite similar renditions to the Solar RGB. Um, but it's programmable. Uh, it's got six settings for intensity. Yeah. And that's it. But they will be bringing out a version two soon, okay. which is going to be fully Wi-Fi programmable. Cool. Uh, so really nice system, all in. Our filters, we've got Biomaster 850s, two of, and we're using twin CA2 as well. Yes, yep. Yeah, so we on each filter. Yeah, probably elite regulator for CA2 art, split uh, in line. And then two in line, so you've got really good CA2 yeah. distribution. So total volume, 150 centimetres by 55 tall by 60 front to back. So you're looking at about 500 litres or so, 125 US calories or something like that. So slightly, uh, wider front to back than it is tall, so you have this uh, a bit more real estate to play with, which is which is great in aquascaping. Right, let's have a little sip of water, excuse me. And how's the audio now? Yeah, audio is fine, blurry, blurry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. sorry about that. Yeah. Did someone just plug that thing in there, power cord? Um, so any questions on the hardware itself? So high-end system, all in, you're looking at what, three grand, Dave, for everything? Yeah, between three and four. Yeah. Well, well actually more like four, four grand, yeah. Yeah. It's not obviously, uh, it's an investment, right, but this is going to last you years and years. And things like the lighting, which you can gradually upgrade, but the tank itself, the cabinet, you know, it's a long-term investment. Um, that's the hardware in a nutshell. It's a beautiful canvas to play with. You know, we love Opti White. We love the rimless look. It is giving you the most kind of the least distraction possible from the aquascape. You know, when we're aquascaping, our eyes want to be just looking at the actual creation. You know, this beautiful piece of nature that we created. We don't necessarily want to be seeing any ugly hardware if we can help it. And that's why we use glass, lily pipes. You know, uh, acrylic maybe. Uh, discrete CO2 diffusers, you know, we really want to try to minimise any impact of, of the equipment on the actual scape. Good, so let's go into the hardscaping process. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about uh, the nature aquarium uh, principle. So uh, we're going to create a, a nature aquarium today, uh, it's mainly going to be wood, um, but the, the nature aquarium principle was a invented by Takashi Amano. Um, he was originally actually a professional cyclist, uh, a photographer as well. Uh, he actually won lots of international awards for photography. He, he sadly passed away in 2015, I think it was August the 5th. Um, and yeah, it was a really sad day actually. Um, but his, his legend lives on, you know. His last work was the Forest House of Nursas in Lisbon, in Portugal, and that's still going now. It was only going to be an 18-month uh, exhibit, but it's been the most popular, the most well, you know, popular exhibition at the uh, Ocean Area de Lisboa um, ever. So they've kept it running, um, this beautiful exhibit. It's on my YouTube channel, um, and it's, it, anyone can go anywhere to do with aquascaping, I would recommend uh, going there if you can before it does shut down. It's been six years now since it's been set up. Uh, it's maintained every every night by two Japanese uh, guys that uh, they, uh, they do three month rotations. So they spend three months living in, in Lisbon and through the night, uh, every night, they spend in scuba gear, trimming the plants, cleaning the, cleaning the acrylic, uh, and just maintaining this thing, and it's a it's a it's a three month rotor uh, with, with a pair of uh, Japanese nature aquarium experts doing this thing, and for me it's just like it just really sums up the power of of the nature aquarium thing. You know, probably 
arguably the world's most beautiful uh, aquarium exhibit. Um, it is a nature aquarium, you know, and that's the power of, of what we're you know trying to recreate today. Uh, and without Amano, you know, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. You know, it was his work uh, that originally inspired me. Um, you know, I bought you know, I was bought in fact as a present. I can't remember what year it was, early two thousands. And I was given uh, Nature Aquarium World Book One, which is now really rare. In fact, I tried to buy it for a, a present for a friend. I think second hand you're paying over a hundred pounds for it now. And uh, I was given this book and I opened it and it was just, just like an epiphany. You know, I just saw these aquariums which were just set up in such a beautiful way that I've never seen before. And it just uh, made me realize this is, you know, this is how we can really make aquariums look. And, and more than that, how, how this makes me feel, you know. And from that kind of moment on, I realized that aquascaping in this style, this nature aquarium, style was the path for me. So that's, you know, where, where I took my journey and, you know, every workshop I do, it's kind of paying almost homage really to, to Tak Shimano and that nature aquarium uh, philosophy uh, and that connection with nature. So if there's anything I can kind of get across to people today, it's, uh, it's the joy of, of connecting both with nature, you know, aquascaping, that's what it's for me anyway. So yeah, good old ramble there. Uh, I did have a ramble. Um, so that's the nature aquarium principle. That's what we're doing today. What it actually is is getting the essence of nature from outside. You know, whether that's a mountain range, whether it's a forest, uh, whether it's just a walk down um, down your local park, um, whether it's just seeing uh, a random group of stones on the floor with weeds growing through them. You know, it's this essence of nature that we're capturing. And transferring it into this, you know, this beautiful empty space, um, and so we use obviously, well, obviously, uh, we use natural materials. Uh, we use wood, rocks, you know, and we've got an enviable uh, collection selection here at Aquarium Gardens. And uh, if you haven't, for those that are in the store, obviously you've seen uh, there's a whole room kind of dedicated to to it all. There's probably 10, 20, 30 different types of uh, wood and rocks. And uh, if you are lucky enough to live, you know, near a store where it does have good hardscape uh, selections, collect collections, then you know, do really consider uh, hoarding your hardscape um, if you've got room, obviously, because it it just gives you more materials to play with, gives you more ideas, uh, and the more the more materials you have, the more options you have, and, and arguably the the more impactful the curation uh, you can create. Yes. So, always what I used to do when I uh, I used to do a lot of writing for a lot of shop tours actually for Practical Fishkeeping magazine, and um, one of the things I used to do is always look at their hardscape uh, selection and, and, and choose at least one item and take it home with me. And so I have you know I have an alleyway down the side of my house now which is just loads and loads of hardscape and I kind of have a mental note of, of each piece now because uh, I've lived with them for years. And I instinctively know, you know, if I do another aquascape at home, I can kind of already visualise in my mind, you know, which hardscape I'm going to use. So, you know, your hardscape is like your, like the artist's uh, palette. It's, but it's the hardscape, so it's always there. It's permanent, um, and the plants are like the impermanence. They're like the paints, which you have more control of, obviously. So, hardscape really important to select strong pieces, it's the backbone of the layout and you start off with a strong hardscape and you're going to create a strong aquascape hopefully. Um, we've got a really big space here so it's important to use for me big bold pieces of hardscape. My personal uh, aquascaping style is very uh, simple, you know I like to keep it simple, I like to keep it repeatable, approachable so folk can like yourselves can replicate it uh, and you know hopefully be inspired by it. You know I'm not a competition level aquascaper. That isn't my motivation. I'm more of an um, aquascaper of the people, so to speak, in terms of just keeping it, keeping it really yeah quite straightforward. Strong hardscape layout, strong foreground, mid ground, background, epiphyte plants. We can work a lot of details in here because we've got a huge 
uh, space to play with. Um, I've got some strong ideas already. I have kind of climbed this, this hard state loosely. So uh, hopefully we can create uh, something really special for you. Is there any questions? Any questions on the street? No. no? Uh, someone was asking what the lights were. Okay. Yeah, they're Life Aqua Master Pros. How much are they, Dave? They're quite... They're uh, 800 pounds each. They're quite juicy, aren't they? Same price. Yeah, they're quite juicy. <laughs> Same yeah. price as the solar RGB. So yeah. yeah, I'd have to sell a couple of books. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> one. Yeah. One, one book. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Okay, should we start playing with some wood? <laughs> no comments, please. <clears throat> Right, so we're good to start off with a strong piece of hardscape. <laughs> so, I could possibly work behind the tank, but it's going to be really awkward, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to put my back to you for a bit. <clears throat> okay, so uh, you may want to put the substrate in first, uh, but the idea today is actually I'm going to put the bulk of the hardscape in and actually glue it in position. Uh, this may want to float, so it's important that it doesn't, obviously, it will just be a disaster. Uh, it's happened to me a few times. So uh, I'm quite keen to ensure it doesn't float, so we'll stick it down today. So we'll use uh, the wood that goes directly onto the glass base, and then we'll use some glue uh, to keep it in place, and I'll show you that in more detail. But this is the, the main, or it's the first piece of wood that we put in. And the idea is I'm try trying to create a wood tree trunk effect. I did do something fairly similar recently, but this is going to be a lot more intricate. So that will just go there for now. But you can see already the effect I'm going for. The main kind of tree trunk is going to be here, and then roots kind of coming down here. So lots of kind of negative space here. This will be cool for the fish to, to hang around in. So fish choice in this tank is going to be interesting. And I'll ask my favourite question at the end, of course. Um, so, yeah, that's that piece in. Not necessarily going to be there finally, so we'll just leave it there for now. So this is... Uh, XXL bulk wood from Hugo Commission. Yep. Um, what are you looking at? 60 quid, 80 quid per yeah, Biggest piece is like that, 85 inch. 85. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and again, it's an investment, but this, you know, hardscape can potentially last you forever. So it's like, you know, we talked about investing in good quality materials. So always try to invest in hardscape if you can. Questions from my real people? No? Someone's asking if you're feeling better, Phillips. Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about being better, is it? It's just about sharing the love. Exactly. Yeah. It's not a competition. Okay. Right, now, I did have a play around with this earlier, so this will come together very quickly. Kind of locking together, you can get the idea here. Now, ideally, I want to find something that's going to curl around here. So, let's have a look. Ideally, you want to use pieces of wood that are the same type. 
or they look similar, the similar textures and similar colours. So although this isn't, I don't know, is it that same? Is it the same pipe bay? Yeah. Uh, what have we got? I don't know. Looks like riverwood yeah, actually. Yeah, river, yeah. So it, like, it is, but it's so it's not the type, same type of tree probably, or the same type of root. It does look similar texture and colour, so you can get away with that for now. That, I don't think that's okay, even that opening, Yeah. So, we're trying to create, you can hopefully see what I'm trying to do here. We've got this natural, natural kind of lines in the wood, this kind of natural grain. If this was rocks, it would be called strata. And we're just trying to make it look as natural as possible. We well, can use a blend of like what we call harmonising, so everything kind of flows coherently in the same sort of direction. Or we can deliberately go with a bit of tension, so the grains here are kind of almost at right angles to each other, which can actually you know, make it look a bit more interesting. But if you, it's a kind of balancing between making it look really natural and you too much tension and making it too unnatural or, or forced or, or artificial. So let's try and play around with this a bit more. So we've got a piece here, and this looks like it might work. Mm, interesting. Get like inception, yeah. <laughs> and then we're all die. <laughs> brutal, brutal, brutal live streams. <laughs> I think that's a bit too uh, prominent there. But that's a really good tip. So if you can see it in two, so I'm working in three dimensions, of course. So I can see everything as it is. When you're seeing it on, uh, on the screen, you get to see it in two dimensions, which can actually give you. Uh, a new insight, and especially if it's a competition aquascaping, it's really useful to use that. The, main, the most important thing, though, with aquascaping is you're kind of living with it, so you have to you know, think about where you're sitting. So, for instance, if I was sitting here, this would look a lot more interesting than it would probably sitting where Mark is. So, you know, think about where your aquarium is in your living space, don't you think about where you're going to be viewing that aquascape from. And consider that with your design choices. Good. So I'm just thinking this looks good and you can see it's quite coherent but there's a huge gap here which looks a bit odd. So we could think about planting choice to kind of blend this in a bit more maybe. Or we could think about more hardscape around here or we could think about we could think about moving this somewhere else. It's all about kind of experimenting moving things around, taking a step back, reviewing it, and then repeating the process. So, you know, if you're at home doing this, and you could take a lot longer than I am, of course, you could take weeks, you know, you could spend a few hours a day, or an hour a day, or a few minutes a day, just have a play around, come back a few hours later, or the next day, have another play around, add things to it, take things away, you know, just enjoy that process. Quite like that. But we've got a huge gap here now, so I wonder if there's a piece of wood out there that I can use.
think it went live on front of a live audience. Yeah. <laughs> something a bit more simple. That's bulky. Quite linear. I think Mark said it's too straight, didn't he? Yeah. Right. Linear is posh, right? But, yeah. <laughs> I'm not posh. Clearly, Charles. It's an island in the air. I might have to put you much later. <laughs> but what, it's beautiful, though. I really like these open textures here. It really gives you a gnarly naturalistic effect and it does match up with you know these other textures around here so it's quite a coherent interesting layout now the, now the trick is to fix everything in place to stop it from floating where is it <laughs> I think I know who that is as well Okay, so a few ways we can, um, I'm quite happy with that actually. Let's make sure I am, let's have a little. So next time I'm Brad, won't me? Yes. Oh, it looks a bit. <clears throat> so this is quite a left one thing around here. So we could fill up with plants maybe around here, or we could maybe add another bit of uh, wood coming down there. That might look quite effective. Let's have a little gander. So this is probably going to hit leech, leech a hell of a lot of tannins. <laughs> I'm not doing the water changes, so I'm all right. But that's not a bad thing, you know, you may want to do a black water set up in something like this. If anyone wants to take photos or little videos or whatever during this, please feel free. Yeah, it's 
saving it, like such the overall impact, isn't it? Mm. It's not too straight, isn't it? Yeah, it's not um it's not natural. Have you got a plant list handy? Plant list? Yeah. Yeah, we've got um, 20 anemones petite. It's just loads of epiphytes. Yeah, um, loads of anemones nana, loads of boosts, some crypts crying petri What are the epiphytes? We've got Lancia or Araguaya, cool. Monte no Carlo, yeah. Pina to Feeder. Oh, yeah, there's Monte Carlo, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that's that. That's cool. Anything else you want to say from the, your list, or let us know what you think, mate? Yeah, cheers, mate. You're getting nervous in these workshops. You look like a space. Yeah. Get some powder. When I was in that tropic alive, they had like eight spotlights on me. You look pretty good, though. Yeah, thanks, mate. You look like a host. I was waiting for you to go, you know, quiz, mate. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So now we need to, uh, I'm quite happy with that. So we've got how many pieces of wood there? One, two, seven, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, it's not cheap, <laughs> not cheapskate, but you know, invest in the hardscape. We need to glue it down now though. So we've got the JBL Pro Haru. I'm going to put gloves on for this. It's um, it's a little bit like a silicon glue. It, it can dry quite quickly, so my aim is to kind of glue it onto the glass now and then cover it with gravel, and it will actually dry under the gravel. Hopefully. Good. So let's look at all the contact points of the wood onto the glass. And basically, hopefully. Blue it in place. So it's slightly bit to the left. Do you want to hand lift this a bit up? Or? Uh, yeah, that should be helpful. Easy to be. Yes, mate. I might do the top now. So, yeah, just. You can guide me in, I think. <laughs> yeah. And then, if you, can you see the next contact point? Can you see that? See there. Yes, there. Squeeze. A bit more than can, a bit more. Slinky. There we go, yeah. mate. That's lovely. Um, yeah, I've got a little bit here. Looks like I'll, I'll get this on. Lift that up, mate. Thank you. 
Is there any more in this, Dave? Yeah. Oh, you got uh, another eight in Coxworth. <laughs> 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 I've never actually done this technique ever myself before, so what could possibly go wrong? Um, it's, it's a well-known technique though, I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. Uh, it involves super glue, which is uh, cyanoacrylate based glue. Um, I use the, I'll get this off um, a well-known online marketplace, uh, and you get quite a lot of quantity for the money. Um, this is the gel type, so it doesn't run. So especially if you're gluing on a vertical surface, a uh, liquid type super glue tends to run and it, when it dries it leaves behind a really bright white ugly mark. So the gel type is uh, much more effective. <coughs> what we do with the filter tips, we... <laughs> do, you, do you spade them apart like cotton yeah, wool? Then, yeah. then when you don't, <coughs> the cheaper ones the paper around and you take them off, but then when you can take them straight out, yeah. you just wedge them in and cover them with glue. Just, okay. just squish it a bit. Yeah. It a bit. Okay. So yeah, I've seen I've seen different methods, but uh, this type these are filter tips, cigarette filter tips, extra slim small filters. filters. Yeah, totally. These are the small ones. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take my gloves off now. Oh no, we filtered one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting black, so I'm going to put another pair on there. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks to Mark. Round of applause to Mark for helping. I'm doing book signs after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a few firsts here. I've never actually worn gloves during a workshop before. And I've never used uh, cigarette filter tips. So, yeah. We found the other one you can use is uh, cotton bud here. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you take off the buds, you can. Yeah. So anything with, yeah, anything kind of like a co uh, cotton wool kind of texture. Some filters do start to smell when you put the glue on it, so don't start puffing it. Yeah. Which might not finish the workshop. <laughs> yeah. Sounds interesting. Okay. Got out. Scissors. Okay, so now what we're doing is any contact points that you'd like between the pieces of wood. So the idea is we, we basically glue all the wood together as one coherent piece of wood. And then that's all glued to the base of the glass, so ideally it's not going to float when we uh, fill up the water. So we'll start off with this here. 
So use the glue first and then fill up the wool. Fill up the I'd usually wedge it and then put the glue on. Or else you get sticky fingers. Good from the guy who's hosting the workshops asking the audience how to do the work. <laughs> I'm just calling it out. Yeah, do you want to care about it? We'll just take turns. Yeah, does anyone mind doing it for me? <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's wedged in there. Take a load of glue in. That's cool. Do you want to handle them as well? Um, no, I'm alright actually. Maybe yeah. Yeah. So you can't see in the, in, the, in the video. If anyone wants to actually see this, come up close and please do so. Or you can just stay in your seats. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> secure. Yeah. So that's that one there. Um, let's have a look. There's one down here we can do. Let's put this one here. So. Any questions? It's got a bit quiet, isn't it? It's good. Any chill vibe. Yeah, yeah, chill vibe. Nice. Everyone's chilled. <laughs> no one asking about algae yet. Mm. <laughs> or when's your next podcast? When is your next podcast? Oh, when is it? Don't know. How are you getting on with your new rock? Uh, I'm working on one with Ty. Yeah. Ty's here, actually. Say hi to everyone, Ty. Hi, Ty. Hi, Ty. Hi, Ty. Didn't see you in the corner. Oh, I just <laughs> hiding at the back. Didn't want to take any of the limelight off, George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing about bringing Tommy in. Maybe use two on that one. You can build them up as well. Put two or three filters in the Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And then uh, the idea is then to use crushed soil and wedge it in as well to kind of blend it in visually and also add a bit more strength to it. Sounds like what I'm talking about then. Has anyone else done this technique before? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm such a beginner. Living under a rock. <laughs> I, usually <laughs> use, I usually use the liquid one though, it tends, tends to step faster than the Yeah, it soaks it. You just go real yeah. fast when you do it, yeah. 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 it soaks yeah. it off. Yeah. Not too much filler though. Fill up off. Did we use filler off? Mm. Just use more cigarette filters than you think in, in the. Yeah. So I want someone to crush some soil up for me if they want the job. Just like a, a little cup for them. Or a half a cup. That's some water. That's some water. Yeah. 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 Careful, George. <laughs> More worried about the tank. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, really hard, it? it's just really awkward to get the glue in there. I need like a long look. Ah, oh, that's okay, I'll just do it there. Yeah. First time live. <laughs> 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 to be fair, the JBL glue holds down, don't we, Yeah, it's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah.
questions? Oh, they quite have. Yeah. It's I feel like I'm starting to ramble. One time in 2011. Uh, yeah. George, you want me to sprinkle the soil on while you do it? Yeah, that'd be awesome, mate. Yeah. In the back. Yeah. Where have you got it? Um, there's some here. There's a bit of a problem, actually. It's working there, can you see? Uh, yeah. Give it a whip on here. Stinks. It was quite difficult doing a 30 centimetre cube. Yeah, I bet. Trying to avoid all the smoke. Yeah, that's, yeah, put them all towards the front. Yeah, just go forward to touch, yeah. Um, a bit here, mate, yeah, where my glue is now. So the escape before this was done by ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> when they want ice cream. When you tell your kids that means they've run out of ice cream and they play that thing. Oh, I'll take delivery. Get the full lift out. But did you know what you say down there, aren't you? Yeah. Ice cream, please. Light and light, please. Give an audio tape for the sons of Aquarium Gardens. <laughs> <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> I don't want to read the comments. Alright. We've all had a drink. Yeah, if you want to go. <laughs> yeah. I've already got abandonment issues, mate. So. No worries. Build the resilience. There you go, just going to close the soil in that bit. See any? Solid. Yeah. <laughs> touch wood. Yeah, touch wood, literally. Um, so, what we could, there's a few things we could do to mitigate. We could wrap um, cable ties, string, tie it all, kind of all together more, more solidly. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a well, just gen gently lift piece by piece, and if, if you feel it's quite solid. A bit in there. I mean, that was a bit of a struggle with earlier to get the to get the angle from the glue. Something like up there, about there. Maybe? Yeah, it's a bit too round. Yeah. Can you, can you squeeze some code the root at the same time? The other stuff in there. Stop there. That's good. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do, do that in a minute, mate. Let me just hear the cigarette go first. Okay. 
Did anyone watch uh, Tropical Live? I watched it Expo, yeah. step I was just going to test a bit more with uh, floatiness uh, sorry mate I've just got a bit of black stuff all over your bench Do you want to... Okay, good. That's the hardscape layout for now. We could always add more detail later if we may do. I'm quite um, quite happy with that right now. So now it's time to put our substrate in. So the Haru glue uh, will hopefully dry under the gravel. I think it does. I don't think it needs oxygen to dry out, so it should be okay. Okay, most people have probably heard of this by now. I've used it probably a hundred steps or so over the years. A proven performer. Uh, Feeds the plant nutrient, uh, feeds the plant roots nutrients, actually buffers the pH as well, softens the water slightly, uh, and just generally has an overall benefit for the aquarium system. Uh, you can get an ammonia spike with it, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It can help uh, seed your uh, new filter if you've got one, or if you've got a mature filter, it's just going to feed the bacteria and you're not going to go through a cycle so quickly. Plants as well, plant growth will just use that ammonia as well. So. Um, don't be afraid to stock shrimp and snails relatively early, just make sure you test the water first for ammonia and nitrite before you add any livestock. But yeah, like I say, you'll probably provide nutrients for a couple of years or so, especially if you use uh, liquid fertilisers frequently. There's going to be lots of epiphytes in here, so we're only going to put the soil in this right hand corner. So actually, uh, it will it will last a long time basically with nutrient content and we can always boost it with uh, nutrition capsules as well uh, if you wanted to target to feed specific plants, crypts in particular, swords yeah. um, these are great for doing that, just put them in the tweezers wherever you need to feed the plants uh, top tip, uh, if you find the capsule wants to keep floating up which it can do, you can just pierce the gelatin capsule uh, with a drawing pin air bubbles come out and it so sunken so that's a pro tip I think that's from Yuri's so good mate what is going to crack it <laughs> no. yeah. um, so that's the soil comes in two types normal grain size and powder uh, we are use normal today powder is better for like really delicate root like the rooted plants or nano tanks so uh, once you grow uh, carpeting plants in particular, you'll benefit from using the powder. Um, also, nano tanks if you want to maintain that sense of scale, which you can potentially lose when you use larger grain size. So consider that. Uh, but in terms of the actual uh, nutrition content and the composition, they're, they're both exactly the same, uh, the powder and the normal. Uh, it comes in two sizes, nine litre bags and three litre bags. We'll probably use a couple 
Yeah, maybe even one. So I'm thinking, what rosette plants did we get? Just the Crip Pecci? Yeah. Any other? Were there any others? Any there, other there was a Rennie. special one and a Rennie. A special Rennie. Oh. I think that's from, from me at home, but we'll put it in here because at the moment <laughs> I'm, I'm, trans I'm transitioning on my tank soon, so if, 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 if you're comfortable having it in here, let's put it in here. Oh, well, yeah, but if you see it at home, we can always take it out. Have a fun. Sharing the love with plants. Okay. Uh, what else can we talk about the soil? It doesn't need free rinsing, so yeah, super easy to install. doesn't need any nutrient rich base layers. Uh, so uh, other brands uh, recommend you know, using another product with it. This is a uh, one to be used on its own. Um, and it, <coughs> excuse me, it just really benefits the whole aquarium system if you're into that. Some as good as it reduce GH and KH? Yes. It, it, it reduces hardness. It reduces... I don't know in terms of KH and GH specifically, but it definitely reduces the overall conductivity. So it has a high cation exchange capacity, which means it takes in nutrients from the water and locks them in to the soil. So you'll actually see, if you tested the conductivity of your water um, literally just after filling up with this product, you'd have in here, for instance, it would be a conductivity of probably three or 400 microsiemens, and then literally a day later, it'll probably go down to sort of 200 or so. Um, how that splits in between carbonate hardness and general hardness, I'm not 100% uh, certain on that. Is that a good answer? Great answer. I thought so. I managed to dodge it quite well. <laughs> I've actually got a test kit in my bag if I get this one. Uh, <laughs> I should not be crown test kits, but it won't go there. No, it's such a water one. Okay. Soil. Any questions on soil? I get a lot of questions on how long does it last in terms of nutrient content. Um, the more kind of liquid fertilisers you use, uh, the longer it will last, because the plants will use the nutrients through the leaves as well as through their roots. Um, the lower energy the tank is, so basically the slower growing everything is, the longer it will last. Um, and conversely, of course, if you're using loads of light, loads of seed to loads of heavy root feeding plants, uh, the nutrient content isn't going to last so long. So it's, uh, it's a very nuanced thing, you know, how, how long will the, the substrate nutrition last. I always try to uh, spoil my plants with nutrients, so I'll give them a good substrate like this and then also feed a liquid fertiliser every day. Um, my favourite's uh, Tropica Specialised and Premium Nutrition. Um, in this, well we probably use Specialised, but you could, if you had, if it was quite a fish heavy display and we're going to use largely slow growing epiphytes, you could actually get away with posting Premium Nutrition because there'll be enough nitrogen and phosphorus in the fish waste and the fish food. Um, but to cover all bases, I, in, especially in a CO2 injected tank that's relatively heavily planted, I'd always tend to go for the specialised nutrition, which is the green, the green one. So always try to spoil your plants, good substrate, good liquid fertiliser, that just makes the plant grow really healthy, really robust. It's like building up its immune system against algae. I've never used that before, immune system, that's a good one. Write that one down, Mark. immune system. Yeah, so if you think about uh, plants and algae always kind of in competition with each other, uh, the, the stronger the plant is, the bigger it, the better its immune system, the, the, the better it can fight off uh, the algae. So, yeah, by giving the plants almost too many nutrients, the, the plants will actually uh, have the ability to take in more nutrients than they ever need. It's a thing called luxury uptake. Um, so it means you, you basically, if you've got a healthy plant tank system, it's almost impossible uh, to overdose it in terms of um, you know, killing the plants or being unhealthy for the plants. 
So don't be afraid to slightly overdose your, your fertilizers. Okay, can I have some more water? Needy, yeah. diva. Diva. <laughs> water. Um, so that's the soil, we'll put that in in a moment. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we'll talk about the rest of the substrate. So um, the, the, the tropical soil in particular is actually really, you know, full disclaimer, I am employed by Tropica, I'm a Tropica ambassador, um, but it's uh, one of the soils that you can almost guarantee it to be a stable batch. Uh, other, other brands you can get fluctuating high nutrient levels and things, so that's another plus point for the Tropica. Carefully, and the idea is just to fill up this gap here and not hopefully encroach too much forward in front of the wood. So, hopefully, let's go relatively slowly. We've got a, little, a few bits that have gone forward. You know, anyone notice my uh, t-shirt? It's actually a fun story about um, apple soil. So when you have a cosmetic sand foreground, you'll often um, have the apple soil behind it, but your mono shrimp tends to dig around, and, and that's what the yeah, that's kind of what's happened here. Yeah. And there are techniques. In fact, do we have any filter one? Techniques to stop, help stop the, the soil from migrating forward too much. You can actually wedge filter wall in between the hardscape and the glass, where you know the barrier points, the transition points. And that will hopefully. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Along here, under the wood. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it gonna? Can you get something? Yeah, that's it. And then some. I'll probably just put this gravel back there. That's fine. Yeah, I'll just gravel all down there. I don't know if we put some. I think we put that in. You don't like the curtain effect, so I'll just hang back there because it's quite a nice gap around here. Yeah. So you could have something, maybe even stems. That log would probably fold most of it back as well. But yeah. I'm just wondering, yeah, because it might create a really good sense of depth actually. If we put something really fine at the back. Even glass. Yeah, even like um, earlier Paris ones with the fences. Yeah, got that. that would have great the depth, yeah. Yeah. Not, not a bit today. Can we have more? Have we got, yeah. Tom, do you want to see if we've got any? Have a look. Or Cyprus, how far I? Or even Valis Nana. Valis Nana? No, that's. Cyprus, how far I? Cyprus, how far I? Oh, the plant side. Yeah. Maybe do some, put some rocks up there as well to hold. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do what you think that uh, suits best, because it's not really going to be visible anyway. Yeah, if it is, complement colour rather yeah, than yeah, go to something relatively roundy rather than jaggedy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Plenty of pizza. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there any other cars at all? Not at the moment. Have we got any submiss on that side? Yes. But that's not clock. Is it clock? No. I'm just thinking about the one, two grades. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Cooper Tula. Let's go uh, Cypress for now. As many pots as you can smash. Yeah. Okay, we'll put some more soil in the back and that's fine. Cool. So in aquascaping you can think of um, quite simple like foreground, mid-ground, background, but in when you become when you get into aquascaping a bit more, you can think about it in more layers. So if you think of the sort of champion aquascapers and contests, you look at their scapes and there's just so much kind of depth. And if you analyse them, you, you realise it's actually use of structural elements to create the depth in, in specific almost steps going from the front to the back. And so we can use that to our advantage to help create this illusion of extra depth. So one of the things that I'm doing today is going to actually plant quite a fine textured plant in the background and then broader textures at the front, and that can actually help increase this sort of force sense of uh, perspective. It works better when the, the actual textures are similar. So, for instance, if you had um, hydrocotyl tripartita as a foreground carpeting plant, that's a you know, relatively big leaf shape, probably about 10 millimetres. And then you actually put um, grosso stigma behind that, and then the hemiapus cuba behind that. You know, so you're actually going down in size, you get this full sense of uh, perspective. So, some uh, tech tips for you. <coughs> right, what the rest of this here? Any um, yeah, yeah. 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 So this isn't actually necessarily going to be cosmetic, but I'm just adding some stones around the base just to add as an extra barrier to prevent that soil from, from creeping forward onto the sand. So the idea is we're going to put you know, nice sand and graded gravels around this area here, and the soil is over to the right here, and then all the way running behind this, um, you can't see it sat down there, but there's a, a structural, uh, Route coming down here, where all the soil was pulled behind. So, in fact, we'll use some stone down there as well. Do you want to? Should I do the back and you do the front? Yeah, yeah. do you want to? Yeah, if you yeah. pass them over if you need any. So, we're just popping these in. It doesn't really matter how they look because they're going to be covered effectively, but it's good to position them as if they will be visible, just in case. So. You want to kind of use the natural strata, we call it, when we're talking about stones. You have these natural lines, and we can deliberately line them up uh, to give you, uh, to, to, to lead your eye to the focal point, and it looks more natural as well. 
So the focal point here is this huge kind of you know, tree trunk effect here. So then we have all the strata kind of pointing towards that main, that main weight of the wood. thinking ahead as well when we start planting depending on how high we want to uh, slope the gravel we've actually got some really great um, gaps in between these stones here and the wood and we can it's a natural place that we would find epiphytes in nature so we can just literally uh, wedge those epiphyte plants like bigger blander or alubius these are perfect positions for that okay do you have any more of those lovely small elderly Steve, you like in the section of elderly nanos? Yeah. From that Pixar sketch, Have you got any of the um, WIO natural gravel stuff? Yeah. Has, has anyone, are there any other brands supporting this project? Or can we use whatever we want? Use whatever you want. Yeah. I think it's pretty out. Cool. Um, so I think, I think this is, this reminds me of the Unipack Samoa. And there's quite dark, isn't it? Yeah. Mind you, the um oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I think that really that through the video that's going with that, isn't it? The yeah. 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 So if you use that. And have we got anything sort of bigger texture than the than the video? Yeah. Can you just mean yeah. that kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. in between that. And no, sorry, it's uh, bigger than So we've got some small pieces here. It reminds me of Frodo stone actually, beautiful kind of jaggedy textures, quite geometric in its overall kind of shape. So So it looks quite uh, linear at the moment. You've got like a very unnatural looking line of stones. But we'll have to, well, after we put the gravel in and we've graded it and we put the plants in, that's going to soften. And those kind of real stark elements, the stark contrast of the, the empty glass, you know, the unnatural looking rock just situated on the empty glass and then suddenly going into the wood, you know, those all look quite jarring, I think. So we just, we can think about the future and how it's going to kind of soften. So I don't think it's uh, finished just yet, of course. Thank you. 
So how long was this running as Philippe stayed? About two years? So this, yeah, we'll run this for about two years. Yeah. And so this was originally done by me, wasn't it? And then yeah. Philippe, was that two years? That was two years. Philippe well. being two years, yeah. So, um, yeah. It's good to run the bigger tanks for a long run. Yeah, I think it's really nice to see a mature. I think there's something to be said for really uh, seeing, a, living with an aquascape in the long term. You can really see how the plants kind of mix and meld in with each other. You'll see stuff that you wouldn't you know, experience, of course, if you're running a much shorter term aquascape. And there's lots of things you can do to help you know, uh, maintenance a lot easier on long term aquascapes. Uh, my favourite, you know, my favourite thing is to use easy plants. You know, it's no secret I love, you know, Java ferns, Anubias, Crips, Bucophalandra. You know, all these really easy, relatively slow-growing plants. But what I do is um, actually inject CO2 as well and run relatively low light. And then what that does, it just makes the plants grow really healthy, nice and slow, sustainable. Um, but because you're running low lighting, you're not getting really fast, you know, plant growth. Uh, virtually no use of algae. Yeah. You're going to carry, yeah, just put the barrier around here. I don't know if I can't see around there, is it? There's a couple of spots, yeah. I've got a bit of space there as well. Cool, yeah. So, Another sort of top tip, when you're choosing your stones, often even if you're buying the same kind of branded stone, say it's Dragonstone, excuse me, Dragonstone or Mini Landscape Rock, or Frodo Stone, Elderly Stone, or whatever, just look, look at them, look at the stones when you're buying them as a group, because you often see they're part of a different family, and even though they're the same, like I say, the same brand, they can look quite distinctly different. So good example is with Dragonstone, you'll get some like really distinct uh, orange pieces. You can also get like really brown pieces, and they, they might look a little bit unnatural when they're together. Uh, so think about that when you're, when you're choosing your stones, especially if you're buying you know, uh, high quantity. But there, we can always add more detail later. <coughs> okay. Okay, time to add our gravel. In fact, there's some better scissors there. Right there yeah. Trying to like spray the radiator scissors. Okay, so this is an inert gravel. It's, in my experience, relatively clean. Doesn't really need rinsing or, um, yeah, washing too much. I'm just thinking the best way to do this without spilling everywhere. Uh, do you want me to fold it in there? Or you get it's like a jug. Yeah, uh, probably just open. I think I'm just going to pour it from the back and move yeah. it forward. That's my plan. <coughs> So it's going to probably kick up a little bit of dust, so don't be scared. It's like an advanced sand pit, isn't it? I mean, sand pit. Sand pit. It's getting more expensive. Yeah. yeah. Well, like what we're doing here is, is like, you know, it's, it's 3D three, three art, really, but it's, you have that extra element of life, you know, that evolves the whole thing, and you have this element of control, you know, how it, how it evolves and turns out. So, yeah, it's more than a hobby, right? It's, Okay, 
can see already it's softening around the stones. So it's important to choose, if you're doing an inert gravel substrate, open cosmetic sand substrate, it's important to kind of match your colours, blend your colours. Um, you know, the greys are coming out really nicely on this elderly stone, for instance. This is a danger area where the, the soil's mixing up with the, with the sand now. But we can, we can add, you know, bits later on to stop that. I mean, we can probably just add a bit more sand over there for now. And we need to put a load of sand in there as well. Yeah, you're slating it up, you can it very flat, very flat. Yeah. The good thing about when you've got a big cosmetic sand uh, aquascape, you can clean it really well just by siphoning off a, a top layer and you can just buy a bag of spare and then just sprinkle it over the top. Sometimes that's quicker than trying to clean it. And you can always clean it later and recycle it. We use it either. So we'll finish this sun bit and then we'll... Is it a good time for a break after finishing yeah. this sun bit? Yeah, I think once Bath's gate's done, that'd be a good time for a break. Yeah. Do you need any more sun for the middle? Or yeah, we'll I think we'll pour... Just open another bag. Have we got a smaller bag or...? Yeah, but... Okay, so we'll get five litres. Have we got any in the maintenance room? Could you just check for us? Yeah, I love that bit when the sand goes in because it completely transforms yeah, the whole feel. Yeah, it's nice that. Uh, and then we do the detailing as well. That's good. Yeah. Well. I've got some really good Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Isn't that it? is nice. That's going to match the greys even better.
that's probably a good time to go for a break. I'm going to carry on doing this so they're entertained. Yeah. But if everyone else, I'm not going to be doing much chatting. I'm just going to go in and zone out doing this for a bit. So if everyone gets a refreshment, I'll carry on doing this. They'll have some ASMR stuff. Everyone's a winner. Have you done moment? Yeah. <laughs> if anyone wants to chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine as well. Yes, mate. Same person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering. Shh. I've got to think plants to think of, though, that's the thing. You think your life is a busy bit when it's out? Yeah, it looks like it's just naturally broken away, though. Yeah. It's quite a good scene, it, like that, actually. Where's everyone come from? Portsmouth. Portsmouth? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Jersey. You stay here overnight? No, I've gone back in a bit. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah, about three and a half hours. Yeah. Is it a horizon one shorter distance for you? Huh? Is it a I think I'll go to Horizon next week, actually. I need to head up that way anyway, because I'll come to the fish tank with my friend. Oh, right. Yeah, what's that skanker line like? Is it nice? It's back in the box, man. Good. Are you free next week? Uh, yeah. Cool. It's weird to touch, though, when you feel the edge of the glass. It's beveled edges, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so strange to feel. Yeah. But it feels like it's a tiny bit cleaner than ADA, to me. Does it? It looks, it feels like just a bit more high quality. Yeah, because you've got ADA as well, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. You alright? Yeah. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, mate. That's nice. Oh, there's not finished yet. <laughs> That's alright, George. It's alright, isn't it? Don't fall. Why'd you sound surprised? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not actually George Farmer, I'm uh, his evil brother. It's that bit of texture it makes, isn't it? That little bit of wood. That little, that little tree. <laughs> <laughs> so a pet, a pet hate of mine is actually having like, a stink layer of inert gravel because it just looks really odd. And it's not serving any purpose. You're just taking real estate away from your canvas, aren't you? That's what you told me, didn't you, about mine? Yeah. Yeah. See? It's square, so it's all good. I can trace this, but it's excess.
test in the individual cases to, oh, uh, but that's actually, Questions on the live chat, let me know. Mark's manning it so you can fire any appropriate questions at me. What tank is this? It's a a D and D Aquascaper 1500. So it's 150 centimetres long or five feet by two feet front to back or 24 inches or 60 centimetres or 55 centimetres tall or 22 inches. Overall volume about 500 litres or about 125 US gallons. <sighs> Don't know how you do that. It's my job, mate. How big glass? 15 millimetres thick, about three quarters of an inch. <laughs> Is it 40 white? Yeah. And base? Yeah. Well, all five panes. Um, right, next step is actually going to add some more gravel when it arrives. It's just getting washed. You can tell it's a bit dirty, so we don't want cloudy water ideally if we can help it. But we may get some cloudiness from the wood. That's just been collecting dust and debris over the time. We may get a little bit from the, from the gravel here. Uh, oh, we've got my special red colander somewhere, so I should be alright. Okay. There's a gravel. So what would you say that, that that whole state as it is would cost? As it is right now? Yeah. Including the wood and the substrate? Yeah, stones, all stones. of that as it is now. Four and a half, four and a half, five thousand with those lights. Just escape. Oh, just materials. Oh, you went for it? You're probably looking about... Four hundred. Four hundred on hard escape and then by the time the plants go in, probably another six hundred. The way we're planting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at all in the whole thing today. You're looking at six, five or six. Everything you see. Yeah. Equipment, hardscape. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad, really. Five or six a cake. Yeah, because I could probably spend three, three and a half or more, yeah. 900. So you think, well, 1500 is not bad, really, is it? Yeah. The the lights are the expensive part, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. You could you do it with the two twin stars like we used to have it yeah. to reduce yeah. cost? Yeah, 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 it could do. On this scale, that would work quite well as well with the twin stars. Smearing oh, this. Um, right, let's do some gravel. Is it coming? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, so on the chart, let us let everyone know where you're from and then have a chat amongst yourselves. I've always liked the chat for building the community. We talked about community at the beginning of the workshop. It's one of the best things about what we do. Yeah, the, the scope is called Rooted in Nature. Nature's foot. Nature's massive foot. <laughs> Big foot. Oh. Big foot. So rooted in nature because everything I, like, you know, everything we do really comes from nature. You know, we're rooted in nature, and this is like a root uh, representing that philosophy. Rooted in nature. Oh, nice. oh I like it. Thanks, mate. I grab all your hoods. Oh, cheers. That looks lovely. Yeah. Big, big, big bucket. Yeah, standard. Yeah. <laughs> Ten <laughs> They're okay, I've got a, yeah. Uh, this is a top tip. Um, rather than just going for a plain kind of inert, boring, sort of flat sand, uh, we can add uh, more textures. 
So you will use your right, sure. Yeah, no, 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 just a bit fell off. Oh, no worries. <laughs> so uh, you can add textures, but they need to be a similar kind of texture, but on a bigger scale, and they need to be a, a similar kind of colour, otherwise they're just going to look really odd. So we've got some, what's this one called, Dave? This is the Wio. This is the Wio Elderly Gravel. Wio Elderly Gravel, so it matches perfectly the Elderly Stone. So these are, they both work on that style, yeah. 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 So just casually kind of drop your stones around the bigger stones. And just keep repeating the process. And hopefully see already it's starting to take on a bit more of a naturalistic vibe. So the more kind of rounded your stone, the more kind of it signifies it comes from like a fast flowing stream or a river. You know, the jaggedy stone would signify more more of a terrestrial scene, more of a landscape based scene. You rarely see that kind of jaggediness. Well, sometimes you can, but Basically, the smoother the, you know, smoother the stone or the rock, the more it indicates it comes from you know, something fast flowing. So you can use that in your aquascape, not only um, visually but also you know, building habitats. If you want to build a biotope style aquascape, you can really think about these visual elements that help replicate that visual. It's also yeah. nice to break down the stone you use as well. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know, at the moment, if we look at this this rock here, for instance, you know, we've got pure, flat, open sand, and it goes straight into this geometric looking, you know, not very natural, it wouldn't really see that underwater. But if we soften that now with a couple of, you know, a few rounded pebbles, it's just going to make it look a lot more natural. John Spike says it's nice to see George do something different today. I'm loving the sand foreground. Oh, thanks, John. John's a legend. John's a legend. Yeah, hey, brick top, brick top. <laughs> it's actually an awesome street photographer. Yeah, but his top is amazing. Yeah, and landscape. I used to do butterfly, which I always find amazing how people can photograph macro stuff with butterflies. I don't know how to do it. So, maybe John can tell everyone in the live chat. Yeah, John, how do you do it? Uh, John, John actually bought me um, a book. He bought me complete works of the Marnet book. Yeah. He didn't buy me one. No, it's selfish. So, yeah, really tough. Nice, nice guy. No problems in there. And what you can do now is sort of just sprint, and then well, gradually they get less dense and less dense as they go towards the extremes, like you like find in nature. Have we got any more of the elderly stones? Oh, yeah, you can do them, mate. Just a little bit here. Oh, there's some more here. Should be alright, Dave, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just conscious we've got a lot of flat area around here, so we can. Let's see if we've got a little bit of a space. Good. Pleasing. Pleasing to the eye. Uh, let's do a little bit more of a complex rock structure. Build it up around here a touch. Can't see it from there, obviously you can 
Please do feel free to have a wander around. I am suddenly vaccinated. <laughs> oh, that smell there, that's the only problem. You know, name, name it and claim it, mate. Don't fly away from it. Just be a quack, so ask you light or heavy planting? Uh, in between. Moderate. Moderate, yeah. 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 An awful lot of boost. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to make it too sort of linear or symmetrical. So it's good to have some more open spaces, some more filled up spaces. Now, oh, can you get that thing? Oh, yeah, well. I'll just put most of a bit more detail on it. Yeah, thinking about planting though. So the plants are going to really soften everything even further. Will it feature trident though? I was caught in the last one there. Was it? Yeah. Cheers, Courtney. Cheers for dropping it in, mate. Courtney's a legend. If anyone doesn't know Courtney, he's the work guy that's the head of the WAP escape. The cool pair. Yeah, cool guy. Really cool guy. Him and um, Rose, if she's watching, shout out to Rose. She's really cool. Fashion designer. Um, so, got the big bits of gravel here going into the fine sand, and then we've got a coarse or a smaller grain gravel going in between the coarsest gravel and then the finest gravel to so help really make it more blended and natural. So obvious eye tours, just move them around individually if you need to. It's all about attention to detail with aquascaping. It's a lot of small details added together make a huge difference. Begging for something plant um, wise, something different. It would be high tech in terms of we'll use CO2, you know, wash lighting, lots of circulation. But actually, all the plants we're using uh, are mostly easy, uh, mostly epiphytic, mostly attached to hardscape. We'll have some cypress in the back and some crypts around here. Um, but it, we, it would be ideal not to run very high lighting because a, a lot of the epiphyte plants. Um, will grow algae, basically. They're very slow growing naturally, so they don't have that ability to fight the algae off. Are you using any mosses? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> See what you think when it's done. Yeah. I, I don't tend to pan my aquascapes. Yeah, some people might have realised that. Kind of. <laughs> that tends to be an aquascape. A lot of the workshops I do, I'm limited by the, um, we're always limited by the resources. But some stores are particularly limiting, so I've, I've kind of learned just to you know, go with. Here, it's the opposite. It's almost overwhelming what you can create. So it's actually, in a way, more challenging to do an aquascape in a store like this, a shop like this, versus a smaller 
the shop with less uh, availability of resources. Okay, good. We've got the. What's got shells in it? It's a bit, it's a bit of an abstract concept, having like a seashore going up to a big tree roots. Yeah. But I don't know. It's got some white flecks in the in the elderly stone. So some white flecks. The actual shell pieces are like white. So I'm just conscious that they're going to really stand out. Dave. Yeah. Have we got? Oh, we got the Rio Zinga, haven't we? Yep. Sorry, I've made you clean up for no reason. I didn't realise it, it had shells in it. Yeah. Oh, God. I didn't realise okay. it. Yeah, can we have some of that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Restate, take it all out. Yeah. Yeah, retake. Yeah. Retake. <laughs> then, anyway, anyone done a retake? Yeah. 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 Have you? Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Oh, I've been doing it for 12 years. 12, 12 years? I'm not 13. No, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Yeah. Twelve years of wasting money, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Huge investment. Yeah. I was going to get a uh, tank off Vince. Vince, yeah. Yeah, do a full-on fighting. Because you don't his um, his, his large. Yeah, his home tank. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he showed me the uh, one that he was getting for it. Yeah. Yeah, he has some nice pictures in there. Yeah. I've played this game with it. No, last night I saw him was um, at a event over in uh, Windsor. Okay. That's when he showed me uh, the uh, one that was going on there. Yeah. 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 The actress type, in this case, is pegging for a heavy dose of operators. It might be Alex or Ryan. Yeah, who is it? Who is it? Is it I reckon that's Alex. That's uh, Ryan speak, heavy dose. Do you reckon? I reckon it's Alex. Yeah. Who is it? Who is it? Heavy dose. Yeah, is it Alex or Ryan? I'm wearing that t shirt. If everyone likes his t shirt, check out Moss Cotton. Yeah, I'm still waiting for mine. Yeah. No, shout out to the Aquascape and Type, actually, a YouTube channel, if no one's seen it yet. I just wanted to watch out for it. It's right. Yeah, yeah. He was right. Yeah, I think. He's a bit of a poet, I've learned something from there. Well, yeah, I've learned the best. One of the best. One of the best. Yeah. Right, can we do a bit more detailing or we'll make sure we're Anyone got any questions on your yes? No, I was shy. Mm -hmm. To the end of the talks. We'll see if you get everyone off. Mm -hmm. oh, shut up. Okay, my mate. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Good fun watching a man put pebbles in his hand. <laughs> Money for this. So in the first couple of weeks, if you're doing 50% water changes every day, yeah. would you still fertilise every day? Yeah. Yeah. Even though you're stripping up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the, the plants still need those they need uh, relevant nutrients. Especially uh, important to dose early on uh, with tissue culture. Plants, Even if you're EI fertilised. Yeah. 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 If you've got a, you could probably get away with less if you've got a new soil, because that contains a lot of nutrients. Um, but obviously you would you dose uh, at the right time of day in, in order to say that you've got the maximum availability of the nutrients. Good. Not often I'm like quiet, is it? That was taken. So I think it's coming together. We've got loads of plants prepared, epi five plants. Uh, let's talk about plants and why we keep them. So, plants not only look beautiful, and you can obviously see some amazing examples here, uh, but they have loads of 
benefits, health benefits for the aquarium system. Uh, Plants photosynthesize, that means they use light and CO2. Even if you don't have CO2 injection, they'll still use the CO2. They need it. Uh, that's kind of the baseline level in the water. Uh, they use light and CO2 in order to grow. Uh, the, more, um, the more light and the more CO2 you have, the more oxygen is produced. So that's photosynthesis. So oxygen is essential for all the living things in the aquarium, including the bacteria. Of course, the fish, the shrimp and the snails, they all need oxygen. So the more plants we have, uh, the faster growing, in fact, those plants are, the more oxygen we get, and uh, the more health benefits that, that provides. Plants also help to give the fish a sense of uh, shelter and security. Um, we've got lots of great examples here. You've got lots of overhangs, loads of places for the fish to feel comfortable, uh, hide away if they're feeling threatened, etc. Um, and ironically, almost uh, most fish will show themselves more and be more arguably more colourful if there's more places for them to hide. Um, there's a caveat to that: my discus just go dark all the time, so there's no problem. <laughs> but you'll see some beautiful examples of here. You know, they're not stark aquariums, right? They're, they're fully planted. Loads of loads of healthy plant growth. This is really just so beneficial for everything, the bacteria all the way up to the fish. Um, it had to help to fight off algae as well. The more plants you have, the better the plant health, the faster growing those plants are, uh, the better maintained the tank is, the less algae you get. So, you know, one of the biggest sort of sources of um, issue for a hobbyist is, is nuisance algae. So I would suggests if you want an, uh, a nuisance algae for the aquarium in the longer term and learn how to grow aquarium plants properly, learn how to maintain your aquarium properly and you should never really run into any nuisance algae problems. How you define nuisance algae that is a personal, that's a personal kind of subjective measure so I don't mind seeing little bits of green spot algae you know even tiny bits of BVA on you know the slowest growing plants you know some small anubia somewhere as long as it's not kind of visually disturbing me, you know, wherever I sit and view my aquarium from, if, if I'm looking at that aquarium and I can't really see the algae and it's not causing me any problem, then, you know, it's okay to, to leave it. You don't have to have, you know, the immaculately clean, pristine aquariums. I mean, they are in here, right, um, because that's these guys' jobs to keep these tanks so immaculate. But I just kind of, for those that are watching at home and those that are in the audience right now, don't be too hard on yourself if you do have a little bit of algae. That's the number one advice I've had about. I've got a question from Raw Aquascapes. Is it better to dose when the lights first come on or when the lights are hit full power? Uh, I don't think it's going to make any uh, noticeable difference, but um, it makes sense to put them on first thing. I love the fertilizer in first thing. Yeah. yeah. Have we got the Rio Zingu yet? Yeah. Hey. <coughs> uh, so that's the yeah the advantages of plants. You know, they, like I said, great oxygen, shelter and security for the fish, help prevent algae. You know, look beautiful. You know, at any one time in the hobby, there's probably around 150 to 200 you know plant species available to suit all you know levels of difficulty, all tastes. You know, so many different colours, textures types of plant growth, you know, mosses, floating plants, rosette plants, carpeting plants, stem plants, epiphyte plants, you know, there's, there's something for everyone. And it, as I'm listing these things off, I'm aware it might sound a bit overwhelming, but what I'm saying is um, there's something for everyone in this hobby. You know, you can, you can have a super low-tech, uh, non-CO2, no-filter, um, you know, minimal water change desk, aquarium with just plants in it, you know, all the way up, you know, to a system like this, which is going to obviously cost you a lot more in time and energy. Um, but there is, there is something for everyone, and there, there is the knowledge out there, you know, on the internet, you just look in the right places uh, to help, you know, give you guidance and advice if, if you need it, you know, and, and shops like this, you know, check out their own YouTube channels, check out their websites for articles. There's so much great, you know, free information out there. Someone's asked, what's your favourite fish for a tank? 
It depends on the it depends on the apple stick. Yeah. Mm. Cuppies. Cuppies. <laughs> um, I really like neon tetras, you know. Yeah. Uh, I've always got a fond uh, relationship with neon tetras because they they were the first real fish that I remember seeing as a kid. Uh, I remember being sort of transfixed by them. So they're kind of yeah, this is kind of a bit of a special kind of relationship. I've always wanted to keep um, wild discus and outer angels as well. Really fancy, like an eight foot by three foot by three foot or something. So, you know, like a real biotope friendly kind of, you know, really soft water. Right, oh, nice. time off now. Come Nothing on. To see it here. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's something about the, the gracefulness, I think, of angelfish, um, especially the altum angels, they're just so distinctive with their tall bodies and their graceful swimming pattern. But I've never had a tank big enough really to do altums justice, you know, I think they need, you know, ideally when they're adults they can reach, you know, 18 inches tip to tip, you need like a, ideally a three or four feet big tank. Saw some altums in um, the shed, Chicago Aquarium, and they were literally the bodies. The bodies were like massive discus, like this, and then their fins were like this. They were just, I uh, was just absolutely blown away. Yeah. When we see fish like that that grow to their potential, you realise that most of our aquariums are pretty. Uh, that's it. Okay, you can see it's looking more natural now with all those travels kind of blending and having naturalistic textures. And we can play around that, you know, as much as we like. Good. Right, now, we're ready for planting. Let's just make sure we're happy with that. If anyone's hungry, plate sandwiches and uh, Sweet, that's Oh, I think we're ready for plants, though. Okay. Sound is more important. Would you like to break for 10 minutes, George? Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, actually. Does anyone want to take over or go for an issue? No? Anyone think no? Hello everyone on YouTube, I'm just going to have a 10 minute comfort break uh, for welfare reasons. David. David's here. Yeah. No, other David. Is <laughs> the ADA David? Yes, that's what I'm saying. You never called me David. 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 I never called you David before. <laughs>
and then that, that's it. And then you put in the card in the back, that side. I think so. Is yeah. that what you said? We, we, we have cards. Yeah. Yeah. So I assume that's probably there, or just in, mm. inside the room in the middle. Okay. Yeah, so that's a left card I've got here in the space. We did in the shallow, didn't we? Yeah, and we haven't yeah. got a separate either. Give them a stem to make. Give them a hundred pots of birds out there. Give them some bonds I made. <laughs> Yeah, because it's going to be a bit, it's not really going to be African oil, it's Asian things. Yeah. 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 Y
very quiet five minutes. Better now, I'm the future. Because there's some fish when you have a big group. You sold them. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know. Still two hundred and ten. Let's go. Oh, it's mine. Sorry. Super is here, a bunch. I thought because you've got the great big open area, you've got the curve of the wood. Be nice. Use the cypress to, to highlight the height of the tank and also take away a bit of the, you know, the dominance that this wood goes up. If I got the middle of it, I'd have done for a little while. Just extend a little bit. No, I've got a load of epic bite that could go there. Um, I think I'm going to stick my original. Yeah. 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 Guppies. Well, <laughs> guppies. Well, guppies. Well, I was going to say, well, I've well, got some in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Bristol guppies. Yeah. 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 Too big either, do they? Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Actually, your idea of the chain that is nice to set. You know, it's a fish moving around. You know, it's like a fish. They are cool. No, I'm not. You have to handle them and then they bang them. It's not coming at all. I think 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 it's not coming at all. Yeah. Sand areas. <laughs> Corridors are started, it's nice to do. No, don't be sitting for this. Quite the vertical. Yeah, yeah but certainly you've got to sit for it. The size of them will just make the escape look. What a smallish fish. You weren't on a slam fish. Well, like the barbs, it was barbed. They're not too long, they're not a bit high. Okay. Uh, the, the 
labels on for me. So we're going to start, I'll wait for everyone to sit down. I'll just sit here and entertain you everyone that's watching. Show you a few bites. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to start. No, I'm just going to wait. Yeah. Can't wait. That's about 45 minutes work for someone at home. Yeah. Here's some of you prepared earlier. Yeah? <coughs> a little bit higher, George. Slightly. <laughs> It's a fun story for you, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I was at boarding school, I used to go to boarding school, and um, they used to punish us, right? And they used to have to lock, be lock leaning. And they used to have to sit like that in a stress position. Um, and see how long you could do it. But when the, the dormitories were like um, opposite each other. So when the when the, like the master was like looking that way, everyone used to stand up, and as soon as he started to turn around, they were all like, That's <laughs> 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 probably why I've got good legs like, you now. Even if you do say so yourself. Well, now I'm out of breath. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, we're going to start off with the shade, shade loving plants. So you have Buca Philandra and Anubius. Anubius Nana, most people have heard of this, absolute classic. Actually, Tropica brought this into production in 1970, so yeah, 51 years ago. So, what we can do, we can glue it in position, we can use fishing line, we can um, super glue, fishing line, cotton thread, zip ties, or you can do what I do and just wedge it. Like so. And then over the weeks, the rhizome is going to send out new roots. And those roots are going to naturally cling to the hardscape, to the wood. So these are all epiphyte plants, and they, they, epiphyte means it's growing on something else. It's normally a plant and a plant, in fact, but we just call it epiphyte uh, in the hobby. Mm -hmm. These need to be attached to wood, so the, the reason that they shouldn't be buried in the soil or the substrate is because um, the rhizome itself and the roots need oxygen. So if they're buried in the substrate, they can go anaerobic, and then the, the plant basically melts away. So that's why. I just thought it was the roots that can go in substrate, but the rhizome can't. Actually, you're right. Yeah, so the, apparently the roots are okay in the substrate. Yeah. No, you might do that actually around here later on with the smaller stuff. It's really hard to plant them because there's not much roots on them. Yeah. So I'm just. Starting off with the biggest texture part, which is at the moment the Alibius Nana. It's shade loving, so the idea is when I with starting with this and, and pushing it in quite far, it's not going to get too much light. These these lights are excuse me, these lights are quite powerful. So you may, may not want to run them on hundred percent. Especially to start with. You could use a lot of floating plants, that's going to help uh, avoid early algae issues, especially when you don't have many um, fast growing plants, which we haven't got today. Are you gluing, George, or just putting in the I'm just wedging at the moment. We may, we may need some glue later. So epiphyte plants, they will get their nutrients through their roots, so you need to, which are obviously in the soil, so you do need to feed a liquid fertiliser. But most, most of these plants aren't demanding, so you won't need to dose particularly large amounts. So this is, I find this is one of the most therapeutic parts of the aquascaping process. Just you know, really 
getting in the zone, you like colouring in your picture, you know, it's just really lovely. Think about uh, your textures, think about your colours, think about the aesthetic balance. Okay, that's the uh, Nubius Marn there, all in there. Uh, we need to make sure the plants don't dry out, they can, they can dry off quite quickly. Some species are more sensitive than others. Echinodorus is quite sensitive. Bulbitis and uh, Microsorum, they're probably the three most sensitive. So we've got two Buca phalandra species here. We've got Buca phalandra red and Buca phalandra penigain. Uh, both very similar uh, growth characteristics. Uh, Buca phalandra kerrigan has a narrower and longer leaf, and um, depending on the lighting conditions, well, you'll get different coloured uh, leaf tones, etc. So it's really quite beautiful. Slow grower, again, it prefers to be kind of in the shade. Um, we're not going to help it so much with this layout, so I might suggest to Dave actually we start off at least with some floating plants, or at least uh, run relatively low lighting for the first few weeks anyway. So now again, looking for ideal spots to pop our happy fights in. And then wherever, wherever you're putting your, you know, these plants, it's actually softening, you know, the contact point. So if we're using, I think it was five or six pieces of wood in here. Um, where those pieces of wood are kind of touching each other, that's an ideal place to put the, to put the plant. So we're going to soften, um, you know, that contact point. You know, if we think about in nature, um, if the plant comes detached in a stream, floats along the stream for a while, it's more naturally going to get caught up, you know, in these kind of areas. So we're using kind of lessons from nature as well when we're aquascaping. It just helps to make it look more natural. Sometimes we might not know why it looks more natural, but these, when you really look in at a bit more of a deeper level, you find a bit more of an understanding of why it looks good, not just how to make it look good. So I'm, I'm really keen to soften this area around here, around the base where the wood meets the, the stone. So it's perfect to add these finer textured uh, Buca Philandras. We've also got some Anubis Petite, which is going to work around, uh, work on a similar, similar purpose. The Petite's going to look particularly good uh, added around the Nana if we can, because it's the same leaf uh, shape, just a smaller texture. One again around this foreground area. This is going to be a very uh, sustainable layout. Um, I think the, la the previous two aquascopes both lasted around two years each, so this is going to last hopefully another another two year stint. So shout out to Tropica. Aquarium plants for supplying these, supporting this event. Um, I go over at the moment now to Tropica every month uh, for Tropica Live. Some of you may have heard of that. Uh, if you haven't already signed up to the newsletter, uh, please consider that. Uh, just go on tropica.com and you'll see it. And then you'll just get notified of any future events, uh, future guests. And we do have a future guest here. Where is he? He's not even listening. It's fucking.
going to attract the invitation. <laughs> Saying you were invited to Tropica. Oh, we were just betting how if that was going to work. Who won the bet? We'll see. Yeah, so um, Twice Treatment's going to do a biotech aftershave for us. Makes my job easier, just he can do all the talking and all. Post it. Do everything. Yeah. I was just conscious, I was going to put the Buca uh, Bulanja there, but I'm thinking. Anubius Nana would look more natural because, it's, like I said earlier, it's a similar the texture and colour. I'm hoping we don't get much melt. Is this a proper spray bottle? Yep, it's water. Cool, thank you. Do you want me to spray it? Are you doing that? Okay, a few more Buka Palandra bits. Oh, there. Yeah. yeah, probably a new bit on there around there. Uh, for seat. Yeah, good shot. Uh, I've got a, an unnatural gap here. So we can just plug that with the plant as well. And that's all about details now. And more and more detail work. Into like um, when I'm working on my own, doing this sort of thing, I go into like a flow state, and it's just really it's like my favorite, one of my favorite times. And you're just nothing else. You just it's just you and the aquascape. There's no worries. There's no no sense of time. You just it's just you in the creative flow state. It's a really lovely place to be. So if I go quiet, that's my brain's trying to go there. But I forget that I'm with one of those loads of people watching me. <laughs> this wood's perfect for this kind of thing. So many nooks and crannies to wedge it into, remix it. It's relatively straightforward. Try your technique, Brad. Just put some roots in the in the substrate. You only want to melt. There is another plant called Shismoto glottis fratoi, um, which is very similar to Anubius, but you can actually you can grow it as a rhizome or a or a fruited plant. It's really nice. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, yeah, it's a mix between Anubius and. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit similar to both. Yeah. Have you got it in the soil or is it an epiphyte? Uh, epiphyte. Similar soil for me. Yeah. Good. That's the Buka Palandra and the Anubius Nana done. Thank you. 
Okay, good. Okay, now it's time for, this is one of my favourites actually, Anubius Petite. One of the smallest Anubius you can get. There is Anubius Mini Coin that I'm hoping uh, Tropica will bring into production. It's even smaller than this, probably the size of most people's little fingernail. Oh, we also have some uh, arthritis in here as well, so let's do both of those. <coughs> so exactly the same as before, we've got Anubius Petite is the most abundant plant that we have. Where's Dave? Yeah. How many pots have we got of that? 20. Uh, 20, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Tropica. Do you want a hand? Kill up, sweet. You can grab a handful and just work the magic for everything. Trust me. Yeah, mainly around the Olivia's and Armour, for example. Yes, I am. So predictable. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but, but, uh, start off by doing it around the Nan, actually. Yeah. Soften, the, soften that big texture. You don't have to use it all either, so. Yeah. That's not really, we're going to use all the nooks and crannies and then glue Yeah, if we can. Discount if you won't, so it's I do like red. You have to use red. Uh, I was just asked the question: Am I using any red plants? And the answer is not really. In fact, we do have no. Yeah, the boost like the boost yeah. will go a little bit red, and we do have some Araguaia, uh, Hygrophila Araguaia, and Pinus Abida. Um, we might not use them all, though, so I'm just going to see how this progresses. And we can, we can deliberately, what we're doing now is planting deliberately all the way kind of back here. And you can really get the sense of scale. You can get the distinct, we talked about the distinct kind of lines to encourage that view of depth. So we've got, we've got the foreground kind of cosmetic sand here, leading into like the bigger gravels here, the rock. You've got your first element of wood, then plant, another element of wood, more rock, plant, and then finally this big piece of wood here, so you've got five, four or five uh, distinct kind of uh, levels of depth, if that makes sense. Yeah, why not? We've got a good yeah. That's a that's one thing. So I can imagine this in a year's time already, you know, almost just a, a solid kind of mass of tree trunky Buca Palandra and Anubius. We've got some Bob Whitus as well, so I'm just going to have a little think about where we do that. I think maybe something over here, and over here, filling this gap here. Exciting. Yeah, really. 
Yeah, the lights are aqua life. Oh, you were selling that. Life, life aqua master pros. Life aqua master pros. Yeah. Can someone write that in the comments and then everyone can see it? Yeah. Max like. Max likes the old metaphor. for it. It's life aqua now, apparently. Yeah, they've been life aqua all along, haven't they? Life aqua master pros, yeah? Yeah. There's a version 2 coming out soon as well. There's a version 2. I've been like, you know, I've already used in the course. I don't know the notes. Can you be on fit the version 2 on there, David? Yeah, yeah. natural looking bit there, it's much less. That looks cool, you can see through here. There's a gap all the way through there. Yes. Two for six hundred special offer. <laughs> three for twenty four hundred. I can keep going. Buy free on free. Buy free on free. <laughs> So, is there, is there in the same sort of price range as the ADA, would you, uh, or would you go for it, like, say, on, on the spot? Me, I'll get the ADA. Yeah. 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 I think it depends on the scape as well, yeah, yeah. because the ADA, the RGB, super poppy in your face, vivid, all of that. Whereas this, certainly the last scape, it wasn't, it was, it was really nice colour rendition, but it wasn't so pow, yeah. kind of natural. I, yeah, I must admit, when I first one coming here, I was sort of in that tank. It was like, it was sort of blew me away, didn't it? How big it is. Yeah. It's almost the first tank you can look at just because of the white. Yeah. It's sort of saturating, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, someone's asking, will you will you ever sell um, Shahiros lights in the future? Uh, never say never. Stop. Never say never. Just actually snipped off the abandoned leaves, so it's probably the easiest way. There's a little bit on the wood here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have we got any more plant? Yeah. I don't think we have So Petchi, do you want any of the um, Paraguayan things for you? Or do you want to see what I know? It's quite good in the shot, isn't it? I quite like the uh, contrast of the, the gravels and the dark greens. Is there enough soil on the right hand side, George? We could probably do the, the three litre bag, maybe a, maybe even. Um, Nine, yeah, nine. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll stick it all in. Oh, we've got some more. Oh, we've got powder or 
Uh, okay, normal mechanics. Okay, we've got some more epiphytes. Well, you can you can grow these epiphytes or stem plants by Grophula araguay or by Grophula sinensitida. There's also some tissue culture bigger in there, which is it's just going to add so much more detail. So I'm really excited. So I'm going to carry on doing that wedging thing. Yeah. Um, do you want to help? Do you want to, uh, want me to pull the soil in while you doing that? Or? Yeah, it can be actually. Yeah, yeah, do so. So we've got tissue culture, big of laundry, wavy green. So this is even, this tissue culture it's smaller, so we can actually wedge it even you know, more carefully in the smaller, in the smaller nooks and crannies. So this will be um, it looks a bit deformed because it's growing in the cup in the laboratory conditions and it kind of it, get, it grows over itself and it becomes quite deformed. So it doesn't look so attractive right now. But literally over a few days or so it will start to straighten out and look you know like you would expect it to. So Dave and I have known each other six years. Yeah. And uh, oh, it been that long. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, I think we worked together first on the at UCAPS event, didn't we? Yeah, we thought so, we met, met just before that, and then we. Yeah. You see, he saw me running or something. You thought that. Oh, I saw you running oh, right. on the way to work, and I was just driving in, and I thought. Yeah, it was crazy. Then, um, yeah, I only live literally three miles away. So it, it was just almost fake for um, you know, one of the UK's biggest macroscoping stores is just on my doorstep. I used to maintain the tanks in there. Yeah. Yeah, I think we had about four or five. Yeah. So, yeah, when we first came in, I think we had three. Yeah. And then we slowly went up from there, I think. But... Right. This, this is our Grophilus Finnis This is uh, actually quite a fast grower. It'll need a lot of pruning and, and stuff to keep in check. So I'm wondering, you know, sometimes you don't actually need. A little while at least. You can always take it out and make it out of the trim in it. You can trim it to you know to what you want to achieve, so what shape do you want to go for. So this, will, you don't want this to be shaded. So this thing, ideally, needs to be in direct light, and it's going to grow compact, get really nice colours on it. Um, can we take it out there now, Dave? There's some. There was a load in there. There was in there, yeah. You have grown younger sweepings, George. Say again. You have grown younger sweepings. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, I've grown it. Um, Immersed as well. It flowers really beautifully. Is it? Yeah. It's quite an interesting texture. Could go well in here, actually. Is that a sort of way of saying? Do you want to put it? No, it's just <laughs> <laughs> I, tried, I tried it once and it did nothing. Oh, really? really? Interesting. We have got some in once you grow, maybe have a look at the end. Or... Yeah? Do they drink this in once you grow? Yeah, just yeah. as a new product. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, I've got some around. There's not a Weird looking at. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 Y
Just an example, you just get so much, this is the one seed grind, and you can just see how much you get. Like I said, it's all just form because it's so concentrated in there, but this is the big of blunt because you can have one seed grind, it's so cute. So really you can do the detail work now, it's so small. Someone's asked about your tap wall, is it hard? Yeah. Uh, hard. About 350. Yeah. 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 Nothing compared to last night. Probably like 480. 480 last night I tested it. Wow, that is really nice. Like liquid, um, uh, liquid rock. <laughs> yeah, we do have quite a lot of water here, but it's, that's all we use. We just use what we've got. Mm. What we've got. I'm going to show people you don't. Use RO water. Yeah, it's too much effort anyway, I don't know. Oh, well, the benefits of, of making the RO water, yeah. the time, uh, the waste, mm. uh, there is uh, you know, benefits towards the plant growth, but yeah. then it's easy to do a large water change and not prep the water and put it direct from the tap. Yeah. You can do larger water changes more frequently, then that's actually more beneficial on the change. It, it all depends on the, when you, whenever you think about anything in the hobby, the equipment choice, it depends on the goal, what goal you want. So if you want to breed sensitive saltwater fish and you want to have full control over the water chemistry, then RO is the way to go. It's the only, you know, probably one of the only ways to go really. But if you just want a healthy, you know, regular planted tank with most sort of commonly available fish, um, then most people's tap water, you know, is, is, is fine. Yeah, we can always, do you want to be Yeah, break it down for me. Yeah. We're going to put plants down here. It's been probably for ages. Yeah. There it is. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> so this is Bob Whitus grown and nursed. I'm not sure. You know. It's an idea of what. Yes or no? It's going to go white, but we can. A few things we could put moss on it. We can just scrape it off. We can do our fingers together. Do that later. Good. Okay, that's all of the epiphytes that I'm going to attach at the moment. Now it's time for our. Uh, Rooted plants. So we've got, got them. Favourite crips, Cryptoporani beckettii pecci. We've got like big twigs. This actually doesn't grow very tall. We'll probably only grow to the actual height it is. So it's actually quite a nice foreground-ish plant in a, in a big tank. We've obviously got the foreground here with the, the graduated gravels, the, the wood, the epiphytes, a stone, and then we can go into a kind of taller foreground plant. So most people know how to plant, pluck it in your tweezers, in you go and repeat. Now some people like to trim the trim the roots, it encourages new root growth. Other people actually like to trim the leaves off entirely and that uh, promotes new growth and those new leaves will be adapted to their underwater growth. So these plants at the moment they're all grown in greenhouses hydroponically, and that's where the tissue culture variety, which are grown in laboratories. So what that means is the plant's adapted to go out of water, so it's actually physically different in its structure to a plant that's been grown underwater. And some plants can, can struggle more than others to adapt, and crypts are one of the more sensitive, so don't worry if your leaves kind of melt away. That's quite common. And that's the reason some aquascapers uh, like just to trim the leaves right back right from the start. I like to actually see the leaves, you know, right from the start. And you can actually, in, a good, in good conditions, if the plant's healthy to start with and you're giving it appropriate conditions, 
the plant's actually going to adapt uh, naturally anyway. So it's, it's up to you. You can trim the leaves off or you can let them adapt naturally. But we're planting quite heavily with this beautiful crypt. You've probably got more than you need. Shout out to Tropica again for supplying all of these. I don't know how many pots we've got all together, Dave. Probably a couple of hundred. 100, 110. Yeah. Which is a lot considering, you know, we've got a fair amount of weight and space as well. 600, roughly. <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot of here. <laughs> So crypts will benefit from nutrient-rich soil uh, or substrate that you can add root capsules to target feed them. But most are really easy, they don't need a lot of light at all, so it's ideal around here where it's a bit shaded. Texture to the back behind the crypt. So, this is called Mandamia Kaysak. It reminds me of like a bamboo y kind of texture. It grows quite chaotically. I just think it's going to add a really interesting texture to the back here. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. It's not getting so much light, it is quite shaded by that trunk. So, we could always replace it with something different in the future. Um, I would go for another crypt, maybe a crypt with Sula, or maybe even uh, crypt with Sriana, which again grows really tall, like, like crypt with Sula, but a much broader leaf. How tall will that grow? <laughs> this will just keep growing, okay. yeah, and just trim it, and you can replant it, or you can uh, just trim it to how you want the shape to look. Okay, one of the final plants. I'm thinking we might do moss. Hands up who thinks we should put moss in there. Dave does. Do <laughs> you think we should wait till it's mature a bit? Uh, that's not a bad shout, actually. Jeff, yeah, Jeff's an yeah, experienced yeah. moss grower. Yeah. Yeah. I normally just put it in day one, but to be fair, it's easier with, with the wood and stuff. Yeah. It's still moss. It's still easier. I've got a lot in on it. <laughs> 
So it's just going to add an interesting background texture. Quite ornamental, real, real contrasting with the kind of round uh, textures of the Amoebius especially. And this is where contrasts can work quite well. Uh, you, you can go for something, and this is a great example of a themed sort of layout here. It's all very sort of textured, uh, fine textured leaves, apart from the Monte Carlo, uh, sorry, the Hemianthus cube on the bottom. They're all quite needle-like textures. So we can go for something really kind of a strong theme like that. Or we can go for something a little bit more kind of contrasting. So these, for instance, this is obviously a very vertical, sharp texture. And that's going to contrast the bright green and the, and the fine texture is going to contrast, especially with the dark green ground shape of the Anubius. And then you have the, the bulbitis kind of in between, softening that contrast. So it's actually quite uh, demanding. I find the cypress quite demanding. It needs good CO2, ideally. I think it's one of those plants that doesn't really enjoy being underwater. In fact, most 95% of aquarium plants, you know, you'll find growing in nature, mostly out of water. They do. Actually, you can have plants and then a mandania in between the cypress to mix up the texture even more and that make it a bit more naturalistic. But you know, sometimes it is a bit of an experiment. I've not, I've not actually done this kind of style of layout before, so if the plants don't work out for whatever reason, if they don't grow in that position, you know, don't be afraid. You know, failures are there to learn from, and you can always try, you know, a different plant in a different position. I'm actually planting into the gravel around here in the crypts. They will grow, just not as well. There's another layer. Start. Yeah, I'm just saying, don't I? Yeah, Yeah, 
of spit in the mouth. It's got very much that Jordan Stirrup sort of look. It's his tank, isn't it? The twist and bend. Yeah, that's a nice tank. <laughs> it was a challenge. Not against the three thousand pounds set up now. I thought you'd beat an armrest on weight. Yeah, I'll do it. I don't remember that, so it didn't happen. Beat all we'd be denied. They let you in. Hey, the guns are just a show. It's not crying, mate. Water attention, that's all that is. Yeah, it's just creating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those expressive faces. Okay. We can take that, mate. Go and get some dinner back in a bit. <laughs> it looks quite clear already, doesn't it? It's good. It's fine. So let's talk about um, what we've done so far while it's filling up and we'll take some Q&As. Before we do that, we're going to have a spit of this and go to the bathroom. The toilet's rude, mate. It's rude. Toilet, yeah. Oh, it sounds funny. Yeah. Well, bathroom. It's a lavatory. Bathroom, right. Comfort, right. Comfort, right. Comfort, right. Comfort, right. Comfort, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll have a uh, comfort break and I'll be back in a moment. Thank you. 
three nine one nine two, fifteen minutes. Uh, three and four. Yeah, being five fifteen minutes. Um, Oh, that in which you ask at species commonly available. So Valis is one, uh, Lilies is another, and Agiria denser. And so if you only use them back to shape, you'd be really limited. So the other sort of 95% of uh, that that's ground above water. But they just prefer to grow above water because they're more like the CO2. Yeah, they adapt when the flood seasons come. Sugar, okay. So, but we're kind of tricking them into thinking yeah. they're under all the time. Just the, the natural look you're going with, you might go with more mm. natural underwater plants. Uh, okay. Yeah, it would be quite boring scape, probably. Nature's not boring, like it's boring. Yeah. <laughs> What's the benefits of running sterilizers? Uh, with the twin star? Yeah. I don't know. Because no, 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 no. you don't run them at home, do you? No. But I have algae. So I'm right. quite happy with that. So a little bit. Mm. Um, I kind of, I've heard how they work, but I don't know for certain, so I'm unwilling to really pass any strict judgment. Are the ancient bridges that they have a problem The lights are very good. I like so big fan of those. It's quite warm the water. Yeah, it's because once um, the toilet's flushed, the water pressure drops. Ah. So then there's less water coming through than the heater. Oh, okay. It's okay, it's just, yeah, overall it's fine. I was just panicking that we don't find one. Do a bit more detail work on the front.
Wait, get the water back on again. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is on? Uh, it's, you know what it's like here, do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, it's not. Oh. No. <laughs> I did say it was too hot, so I don't know if that caused it to. Is the. Um, it's still warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about Good. Any questions? What's your favourite act? Again. What's your favourite aquascape? My favourite one I've ever done myself. No. In the world. Is, yeah. Yeah, the Florist Pass at Nursas in Lisbon. Yeah, the biggest one. Yeah, mind blowing when I saw that. I actually started crying. Yeah. Yeah, it was just you were just uh, completely encapsulated by it because there's no ambient. Well, there's very minimal ambient lighting and the, just the whole aquarium that's lit up and it's. Um, 160 feet or no, 120, 40 meters long. So I think it's sort of 10 meters either side and then 20 meters across. So you walk in and you're just surrounded. Yeah, and it's sort of three meters tall. Um, and just, um, just breathtaking, really. It gives me shivers just thinking about it. And um, it was the last thing he, it was his last piece of work before he died. So it was quite meaningful for that reason. Um, I'd like to go back actually. And yeah. So that's the most impressive aquascape. For, for me personally, uh, one of the most important ones I, I, I did myself was um, early 2000s, and it was just a huge jar of them uh, with a uh, glossless pigma carpet and some Sagittaria. Uh, in the mid-ground, um, sort of merging into the jar of fern. And I had an immediate under the fern leaves. And so it was the first time I really understood the use of texture and composition properly and colour, because uh, the glosso full carpet, that was meaningful for me because it was the first time I could grow a carpeting plant properly, like a high-tech carpeting plant. Um, so that was cool. Um, and then I realised you could use texture to kind of complement each other. So the glosso stigma texture is round, and that led into the anubius texture, which is also round. Then you had the contrast of the fern leaves, which are very spiky, um, and that complemented the Sagittaria leaves, which are also spiky. So although I had no hardscape visible, um, I relied on you know this sort of naturalistic planting, even though it was quite formal. It was the first time I really understood. Uh, aquascaping. I felt like I could speak the language rather than it being a foreign language until that point. And the more you do it, the more fluent you become in the language of aquascaping. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's just like anything in life, the more you practice something, uh, the more deep you look into it, the more you realise that there is to learn and everything is you know, infinitely nuanced, really. And that's one of the beautiful things about it. There's no right or wrong. Um, it's just how you interpret it and how it makes you feel. That's the most important thing. How would you go around the skip in a tank that's more fish dominated? Yeah, if you want the fish to come first, then you decorate it accordingly. So think about uh, depending on the fish. You know, if you have a fast fish that likes a lot of free space, then obviously you wouldn't pack it for the plants and the hardscape. It all depends on what you want to do. What's your end goal? We always start with that and then you work towards it. So in terms of a fish dominated tank, yeah, it depends on the fish, depends on the size of the tank. Uh, but the fish should always come first, right? You're looking after a living entity. Um, you know, I'm guilty of it myself in the past. You know, I would just crank up the CO2 levels, you know, to get the plants to grow better, to reduce algae, you know, potentially the consequence of welfare of the fish. Um, and now I'm much more like, well, these are, these are things that we deserve to give the best care we can to because we've either taken them out of their natural habitat to do so or they've been captive bred to do so. So the least we can do is respect that life form as much as we can. And that might be setting up a natural habitat biotope style scape like a tie or you know, 
creating you know something that's relatively you know kind of it looks natural but it isn't really you know got lots of co2 lots of light super high levels of plant growth but the fish are happy you can see that they're active there's plenty of oxygen in here because you've got so much plant growth so you could argue you know if you're using more co2 you know the counter argument is well the plants are producing more oxygen and um, if there's plenty of surface vegetation then you know that's good oxygen the bacteria are working really efficiently so there's virtually zero kind of um, toxic organic waste like ammonia or nitrite so it, it's you know in aquascaping and plant repair and hobby and, and anything in life really there is no um, there's no right or wrong way to do something right it's just uh, well, there is there's obviously wrong ways and ways that are more wrong and ways that are more right that's the point it's more everything is sort of infinitely infinitely nuanced so yeah you, you can see around you with the aquariums in here uh, obviously successful you've got amazing plant growth virtually zero algae the fish are healthy and vibrant and active um, and that is one way of achieving success you know you've got high levels of light generally you've got you know moderate to high levels of co2 injection high levels of circulation high levels of nutrients through the soil through liquid fertilizer but consequently you need to balance that with you know lots of frequent water, big water changes because in such a high energy environment those plants and everything in that aquarium system is on kind of steroids so the more the quicker it's growing the quicker anything is growing the more um, metabolic waste products are produced so if those waste products are allowed to build up you know that's when you tip the balance in favor of you know, algae and poor water quality. So that's why you know, I always recommend you know, large frequent water changes, especially in a high energy system. That was a good ramble, wasn't it? Like that Is there a rule of thumb for uh, the amount of amano or snails in the start of escape? Yeah, yeah I, I've read that in my book actually. Uh, I recommend. <laughs> Has anyone got my book? Yeah. I'll wait for it. I can't remember what I wrote. I'll wait for it. You've still got I've still got a copy. Have they all sold out? Uh, yeah. I don't want to misquote myself in an embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Swap copy, mate. Sorry. Um, yeah, so the question was, what's the uh, stocking density for algae eaters, right? I'll go to the chapter on algae. Here we go, chapter nine. How to choose your fish, shrimp, and snails. Signed copies are available, by the way, to buy here. Cheaper, um, yeah. Might as well milk it, aren't I? Here, Graham. Is it cheaper if you sign it, though? Cheaper, yeah. yeah. D values in the price sign. Did you ask a question? I did. This is embarrassing. It's quite a book. It's a good book. <laughs> <laughs> I can <I've been> buy <laughs> that. Beautiful. Why haven't I. I swear I did. He's read my work and remembers I've, everything. I've actually got it, but I didn't... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I didn't even put it in there. That's really nice. Well, I just skipped it. over it. It's not in there. What's the like stocking guidelines for uh, shrimp and snails? Um, in the first, first, um, first edit. First edition. Oh, I'm not going to... I swear I did it. 20 to 100. Section. It's a whole page to itself, look. <laughs> <laughs> How can you miss that? That's why I missed it. Giving it a sight. Amano shrimp. One shrimp per uh, two gallons or eight litres of aquarium water. I don't have to do gallons because it's American. Uh, cherry shrimp. One shrimp per uh, one gallon or four litres of aquarium water. That's a, as soon as you've got more than like four shrimp, they're going to breed like crazy anyway. And then one uh, near right snail. I prefer the Cleveland Corona. Uh, one snail per 12 litres. 
Yes, just a rule of thumb. It's, it's not strict, of course. Lovely book. Recommend it. <laughs> How deep do you need the soil to plant plants effectively, someone asked? Oh, sorry? How deep the soil for planting? Um, at least sort of three centimetres, or one inch, just over one inch at least. But with with, uh, with most soils, you can go you can go as deep as you like, really. You can, you can slope it quite far to the back for aesthetic purposes. But in terms of being thick enough. It just needs to have enough coverage to physically anchor the plant, so that's normally about an inch or so. Inline CO2 or reactor? Depends, depends really. Um, arguably, you could get better results from an inline diffuser because you've got the micro bubbles that are being applied around the tank, and so they aren't fully dissolved in the water. And the theory is that the CO2 gas bubble hitting the plant actually fools the plant into thinking it's getting CO2 gas because it's out of the water, so it will actually grow uh, more quickly. Whereas with CO2 that's 100% dissolved in the water, the plant has to actually work a little bit harder in order to use that CO2. So it's using more energy. It's using more energy in that, or less energy in growing. So you won't get arguably as good growth rates with the CO2 mist versus the 100% CO2 dissolved. I hope that answers the question. What is your personal opinion for the Diana Wallstead method? I have none. I've never done it. No, I can't have an opinion on it. That's easy. Here's one. Time might know actually. Uh, have you ever grown Persicaria Sao Polo? No. Sao Polo? Yes. Uh, he has. <laughs> Needs lots of light, like CO2. Lots of light, lots of CO2. And good uh, nutrient supply. Good nutrients. And you can't get it in the UK anymore. High energy plant. Thanks to an unnamed event. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Uh, what fish should we put in here? Snakeskin barbs. <laughs> Goldfish. Snake 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 barbs. Green tiger barbs. Ghost koi. Probably another goldfish. Off the sick list. Uh, no, I think um, snakes get barbs is a good shout. Definitely an Asian. I think barbs is good. There's not many barbs in there. Is there any barbs? There's only no. barbs. No. Uh, I need it. 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 I think we chain loaches in the bottom. Just a troop of them. Yeah. And then uh, just a load of Amano shrimp. Some creep on Corona snails, maybe. Cherry shrimp. Snakeheads. Has anyone seen that uh, documentary, Blackfish, you know, for the orcas? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. that's pretty dark, isn't it? Yeah. I watched that when you said that um, like that one with the octopus. Yeah, my octopus teacher. Yeah, that's brilliant. I cried on that one as well. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. A bit of a cryer. No, it's good, it's good. You watched that as well? No. I've seen Blackfish, man. That's good. Blackfish? Is that, is that about the, the whales in um, the... The whales in the sea. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen it? No. Very interesting. Good what? Squid games? Yep. Is <laughs> that a new one? Have you ever watched on Netflix? Go on, what? Mate, yeah. everyone's raving about it. Yeah. yeah. Korean, isn't it? You've got tons of TV. <laughs> I like um, nature documentaries. Spring War, I don't know, George. Mating games, yeah. <laughs> 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 And also that other documentary, is it called Strictly Come Dancing? <laughs> <laughs> That's great enough, I love that. That's awesome. It's a joyful program. Are you going to apply for it? No, two left feet, mate. Very time to do that. To be fair, I have seen you dancing. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember? We was, uh, we was, uh, uh, remember we're live, mate, on the YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about dancing. We, we, it was, I mean, what was it to? It's something 20, 21 seconds to go. 21 seconds to go. Exactly. Is that a good one? No, it was in my flat. Your flat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, we just had it. Yeah. 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 Ye
We need another racing car stash. Yeah, yeah. That's very clear. Yeah, right, isn't that? Need some uh, backwater. Yeah, ties it probably a minute. It was black water stuff. Tannins. Everyone <laughs> yeah, just keep an eye on the wood. If anyone sees the wood, he's going to need a tiny bit. Oh, I did it too. Dave, what you put a tap on, mate? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we can go and steal next door. <laughs> <laughs> Is there not an outside mains tap? There is, yeah. It's the same mains so though. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's as fast as it goes on full on cold. Wow, how'd you run a clock like this? Normally, it can't work in these conditions. No, seriously, it's like a dinner party or something. Oh, yes, that's um, I'll just talk about the, what, it summarise what we've done in the workshop. Um, if there's any questions, obviously please uh, let me know. Uh, so the overall, we talked about, um, we started off the workshop actually talking about why we ask escape rather than just how to do it. So it, it could mean different things for different people. Uh, we talked about my own personal view on it in terms of the three C's, you know, uh, creation, consumption and community. Um, and with that in mind, you know, if you are on social media, please do feel free to take pictures of this event and tag, obviously, Aquarium Gardens in. Um, so yeah, we talked about community. What you know, what it means uh, beyond just having a beautiful aquarium. You know, it can help connect you with nature. It can be very therapeutic in terms of actually creating the aquascape, but also maintaining it. And again, going back to the community, sharing it with others, maybe inspiring others, or. At least if you're a beginner, you can learn from others and still be part of, part of the community as well. But we talked about the actual hardware uh, for the lighting, which is the Light Backwork Master Pro, uh, £800 each. This is the version one, and version two is coming soon. <laughs> there we go. Um, the tank itself, D&D Aquascape for 1500 The 1500 is a bit of a confusing name for people. Uh, it's 1500 millimetres, so 1.5 metres. 5 feet, 60 inches. Um, the overall volume is about 500 litres and it holds, uh, and it is around, yeah, it's 125 US gallons. It's 15 millimetre glass, low iron, uh, so it's really nice and transparent. Rimless, we've got wood coming out the top. Some of these plants might start to kind of work their way out the top as well. Um, and, you know, rimless has loads of advantages for aquascapers because. You know, it's all about this glass box that's there to show off our work of art. So we want as little distraction as possible. That's why we have the glass pipes, you know, inline uh, filters with heaters in, inline CO2, etc. We're trying to get as rid as much equipment as possible. So we talked about the equipment. Uh, I was a Biomaster filters, 850 thermos. That's their flagship model. Two of those with twin inline CO2 as well. So we've got plenty of uh, equal equally distributed CO2 around the system. And I just answered a query about the CO2 reactor versus the inline diffuser. So we tend to use the inline diffusers in here or even the in-tank diffusers as well. Um, so the scape itself, as you can see, uh, classic, or well not classic, but uh, nature aquarium style, We're using elements of nature from outside, bringing those into the aquarium space to create this um, this, this natural theme. We're not necessarily directly copying a scene from nature, as you can see. You, you wouldn't see a tree like this in real life, but you've got different elements of nature all kind of combined together in here to hopefully make something quite coherent and beautiful. Um, we talked about Amano at some depth. You know, he's been hugely in inspirational for me. He invented the nature aquarium principle. Uh, wouldn't be here without him. So um, yeah, I always give him. Uh, some gratitude during these workshops. Um, the actual layout itself, I think it was five or six pieces of wood. Um, there's actually a few different, probably two or three different types of wood, but we, we kind of made them, kind of literally glued them together, glued them to the base of the tank. So, as you can see, hopefully create this kind of coherent uh, tree root themed uh, layout, which is strongly um, triangular, as you can see. Lots of open space to the front and to the left, 
and we've really used gone to town really on the grated gravels here to kind of make it a bit more naturalistic. Starting off with the finer textures here, like the pale greys, browns, whites, etc. Moving into the larger textures, then like we use ingu, and then we've got the wio um, uh, elderly gravel. Finally, going into the wio uh, elderly stone nano, uh, the small, the small stones. Um, we I've talked about gluing the wood together and gluing it to the base. That's so hopefully uh, nothing is going to float. I'm reluctant to touch it. But, uh, there we go. So a little prayer to the, the floating gods. Um, yeah. We, so we we went quite heavy on you know this kind of decorative foreground, decorative uh, left hand side here. Um, you know I did want to step out of my comfort zone a little bit was to try a different layout, and I wanted something quite sustainable. Um, relatively low maintenance for the guys here. Uh, a full-on carpet line in here, for instance, with loads of stems, it would be you know, a bit unfair for them to expect to maintain that uh, with all the other tanks we've got in there. And I think it, it's a nice, uh, adds a nice um, balance to the to the other layouts as well. So that's kind of the overall composition, uh, use of decorative features. Uh, we talked about the, the wood and, and the use of the, the grain of the wood to create this kind of coherent flow. Uh, and then we went into planting and we talked about um, you know, why, why have aquarium plants and they have so many benefits to the whole aquarium system. You know, uh, more oxygen levels, sheltering and security for the fish, helps to minimise algae uh, and just improves the whole you know, aquarium uh, biological system. Uh, so you know, aquarium plants, if you can if you can put aquarium plants in any aquarium, it's always going to do more harm. Yep. <laughs> That's a point of slip. Uh, it's always going to do more good than harm. You know, if, even if you just stick with super easy, you know, even floating plants or anubias or crypts, it's depending on your fish, of course. Um, you know, I would always encourage folk to, to plant their aquariums if possible. And ideally, you know, plant them as heavily as you can, as heavily as you can get away with, because. The more plants you have, you know, the easier everything becomes. You get less algae. It, you might have to maintain them, you know, trim them a bit more often. Um, but it's much nicer to trim a plant, I think, than you know, scrubbing algae all the time. Uh, so we talked about the benefits of plants, um, and we talked about the, the visual kind of um, aesthetic appeal of plants. You know, there's. There's plants for everyone, there's plants for every size tank, there's plants for every kind of style of aquascape to suit all tastes. Uh, you know, we've got, we talked about the real basic system, you have a non-CO2, no filter, desktop, nano, you know, with no fish or maybe you know, shrimp, just like little planted bars basically, you know, all the way up to a high energy, you know, luxury system like we've got here. Uh, and you know, it's something to suit, you know, all tastes, all levels of experience. Um, you know, I'd encourage you to, if you don't already subscribe to me or to the Tropica YouTube channel or to Aquarium Gardens YouTube channel, loads of great tutorials, loads of great plant profiles, aquarium tips videos, cinematic videos to be inspired by or relaxed by, um, you know, in-depth videos on trimming, you know, all kind of uh, videos to hopefully give you a bit more of an in-depth education, maybe above and beyond uh, what you've learned today. Um, so we planted, didn't we? Loads of epiphyte plants. Uh, we start with the Nubius nana, uh, absolute classic, one of the oldest aquarium plants available in the hobby. It was actually the first aquarium plant produced by Tropica in 1970. Uh, and then we went into some Buca philandras. Uh, we had potted varieties of Buca philandra red and Buca philandra kedigang. We also had the tissue culture cups, the one two grows of Buca philandra kedigang and Buca philandra wavy green. Um, and then we planted some Anubius petites, and we mainly planted that around Anubius nana because the, the leaf shape is smaller and you, you just get this kind of more naturalistic feel when you blend uh, the same kind of textures and leaf shapes together, it just makes it look more, more coherent. Um, I forgot, we talked about cigarette tips and uh, super glue, we talked about gluing the wood together but that was a, a good experience for me, I've never actually done that uh, ever, so to do that first time live, I'm quite happy about that. So that's cool. Um, we talked about other epiphytes. We actually used some hypophila pinnata feeder. This is a medium category, so it tends to need more light, good CO2. 
and you don't have to grow it as an epiphyte. You can grow it as a regular kind of stem plant, but it's very popular as an epiphyte in aquascaping. It has this beautiful leaf shape, this kind of uh, saw shape. What's the word for that? Serrated. Serrated leaf shape. And in decent lighting, you'll get a more kind of red pigmentation, uh, maybe even like a burgundy as well. Uh, we've planted some bulbitis as well. That's going to, so we've got this kind of gap here, it's quite keen to fill that up. So eventually this is going to kind of grow, hopefully droop down like this, really enhance this kind of mound effect here. All of the epiphytes are going to grow really slowly. These are all slow growers. Uh, we talked about uh, maybe putting the lights on a lower setting to ensure we don't get too much algae. And I would probably put some floating plants in here to start with, in fact, maybe Salvinia alcolata or some Limnobium lemnogartum. I think we've got some in there. Yeah, it's got a bit in there. Um, we've been talking a bit of ramble about floating plants, actually. Um, so this is Amazon frog bit, or Limnobium lemnogartum. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Um, and these are great for a few reasons. They're great for a, a new tank, we call them helping plants, and they help yeah, to yeah. avoid algae, because they, they grow so quickly, they take in a lot of nutrients, they're really near the light of course, yeah. they've got unlimited access to CO2 in the air, so they grow really, really fast, and that's great, because it sucks in the nutrients and helps to prevent algae. It also shades the plants from underneath as well, which is going to help prevent algae, and also you are going to, um, you need to just be mindful, sorry, that these don't get too, you know, completely cover the surface because you can block too much light and then you're running into trouble with plant health underneath. Uh, another top tip for more advanced aquascapers that are running very high energy setups, you could just use one or two of these at all times in your tank and this is just what we call an indicator plant because it's the fastest growing plant in the tank usually because it's so near the light and it's got all that CO2, it's the first one to show any nutrient deficiencies. So, uh, in fact, Lindavium is one of the best ones in my experience. It will tend to go yellow or pale, uh, very light green, uh, more quickly than any other plant. So as soon as it starts to do that, you know you need to start to add more liquid fertiliser. So that's a good top tip. Um, don't necessarily have to you know, use them as a, a full-on floating plant. You can just use one or two as an indicator plant. Um, Floating plants. Uh, what else? We, we talked about background plants. So we had Cypress helferi, uh, Mundania casac. Uh, I just kind of mixed them together to create a bit more of a complex texture. I was just quite mindful if we had like an ornamental row of grass at the back, it might look a little bit kind of too contrived. So it's always nice to mix your textures up. Um, loads of crypt, uh, crypt petri, uh, crypt, cryptocryony, becketii, petri on the right here, a beautiful plant and stays quite short uh, relative to a lot of crypts. This will just form a solid kind of mass here, virtually no maintenance required. Uh, changes colour in different conditions. You may get some leaves that melt back, but don't worry, just trim them back and you'll get new growth, which will be adapted to its new uh, underwater life. Any questions? Yeah. So maintenance, that's always a good one, isn't it? Now ideally, a lot of people will know my regime, it's quite strict. It's 50% water change every day for the first week, 50% water change every other day for the second, every third day for the third, and then after four weeks we can go to 50% water change once a week. Uh, if you've got mature filters, if you've got loads of fast growers, um, you know, you, and you've got a huge tank, you could potentially get away with less. Um, but more, more is better. You know, the bigger the water changes, the more frequent they are, uh, the less risk of algae you get. Um, there's obviously a, a point of diminishing, diminishing returns where you're not going to get any benefit. But you know. All I can say is, in the, in the first few weeks of an aquascape's life, you know, the first four weeks, I would say, the first sort of 30 days or so, it's, it's so important to do those frequent large water changes, especially if you're using a soil substrate, uh, especially if you're using like moderate, to, you know, moderate to high lighting, CO2 injection, you know, 
you've got a high nutrient, uh, you've got a, a basically a soup that's really ready to grow algae, okay, because algae just loves light and nutrients, so we really need to focus on um, lots of plants, make sure some of them are fast growers, look after those plants, give them enough, not, enough light but not too much, good CO2 injection if you can, um, good liquid fertilisers, good substrate, good levels of circulation, good maintenance in terms of water changes, and you shouldn't have really any problems. It's really easy, really. It's all in my book, by the way. <laughs> Just not forget that. <coughs> Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It's going to be weird walking in here and seeing this every time, but yeah. not Philippe's okay. yeah. So we may get some tannins from the wood. So tannins are just a natural, uh, like an acid that leaches out from the... I keep getting really paranoid and thinking the wood's moving, but I think it's just me. Um, yeah, we may get some leaching tannins. They, they can just be... Um, diluted with water changes, uh, or as they do some impregnated uh, pre filter carbon sponges, uh, which we could use in there, and that's going to help uh, add, absorb the tannins. So, add it, with, with activated carbon, you chemically absorb stuff, you don't absorb it. So, there's a funny English thing for you. Um, so, yeah, we could use carbon filtration and or frequent water changes. Ideally, the guys are going to be doing large frequent water changes anyway, so that the tannins won't build up too much. Some people like the tannins, some people deliberately encourage the tannins for a black water setup, but this is more of a nature aquarium store where we go for nice, clean, clear water. Oh, sorry, Dave. <laughs> Any questions from the YouTubers? YouTube crowd? Uh, a couple of people asked what filtration is going to be used on the tank. I'm very happy to answer that question. Out <laughs> <laughs> of the Wazze ambassador. Uh, yeah, we're using a Wazze, uh, you can't see it, I don't think, in the screen, but a Wazze Biomaster 850 Thermo. Can you see it? You might see the top of it. You yeah. see it now. Ooh. So, two of those. And uh, they'll be plugged into some glass pipe work. So, like we said, we uh, avoid. If we can help it, avoid seeing any any equipment in the tank. Obviously, glass helps to avoid that uh, visual distraction. Uh, so yeah, Biomaster is a huge fan of Biomaster. Been using them since they were released a few years ago now, and I think they're used almost exclusively in the shop as well. And most of the shops that I work with use, use Biomasters. It's more the uh, the pre filter is really easy to make it to maintain. Please helicopter again. Um, yeah, they just make it really the pre filter. You can just clean it in a few minutes. You don't need to use old tank water, you can just run it in your kitchen tap or whatever. Um, built in heater as well on the thermo model, so you don't have the ugly heaters in the aquarium. Um, the 850 comes with a 400 watt heater, so it's pretty, pretty chunky. Um, more than enough, well two of them on here, so 800 watts of heat on here, which is more than enough. It's quite warm in here anyway, so that's no problem. Um, and I always use the supplied media. Um, a lot of people will swap it out for Seachem Matrix or some other uh, branded media, but in my experience, I've had no issues just running the supplied media. I use them in my in my uh, viscous tanks and my all my Aquascape 1200s and all of my previous scapes have all been run on the standard uh, Wazze media. Uh, I have swapped the, the pre-filters for carbon occasionally and I think coarse, coarse sponges in the viscous tank because they obviously get clogged relatively quickly in there. Um, sure, any other questions? We talked about filters. Uh, could, could you share some information about your thoughts on flow? Flow? In terms of water, 
Yes. Well, in terms of psychological space. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> I'd rather talk about the second one. Um, yeah, flow and circulation are intrinsically linked. So uh, we'll just talk about this as an example. I think that's probably the best story to tell. So we'll have two filters in here. We talked about that already. Oh, Oazo Biomaster 850 thermos. And then what I would suggest is we'll have an outlet on here and an inlet on this side and then diametrically opposed on the other. What well, that means is a fancy way of saying just opposite. So uh, the outlet on here, potentially the inlet on here. And then what that's going to do is going to create a gyre effect. And it's perfect for this style of aquascope actually, because what you want to do is you want the water to kind of work its way around here. And then what that means is you're going to get a really nice even circulation throughout the whole aquascope. And that's just going to really promote nice growth because all of the CO2, that CO2 mist that's being fired out from those Biomaster filters, is you've got it coming from this here and here and coming from here out of the inline diffusers. And it's just going to this, this CO2 rich water is just going to circulate around this tree trunk and feed all these plants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Big noise down, please. Sorry, we teach up. No worries. Any more questions? That's flow covered pretty much. Um, I always aim for, not always, I aim 10 to aim for 5 to 10 times a turnover. The more, what I mean by that is if you've got a 500 litre aquarium, you want a uh, circulation level of around 5,000 litres per hour. So that's 10 times the 500 litres. Um, the more higher energy you go, so the more light and the more CO2 you have, uh, the, more, uh, the more fly, the more circulation you tend to need. Because those plants, uh, they'll need an equal opportunity to get that CO2. Yeah, yeah. And the only really way to do that, to, to guarantee that equal opportunity, is to have um, you know, really well circulating water. It's quite fast, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Give me an excuse to come back and see it. Yeah. Where, where do you live? Chertsey. Sorry. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're coming up this far. Nice one. Can you drive? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. George, are you open to any plant suggestion at this stage? Plant suggestions? Yeah, there's just one species. No, I'm open to any suggestions. Uh, Whatever I accept it, I think. The gender of me bold eye at the base, just to add a bit of contrast to the greens, like poking over bits of wood here and there, just a couple. Yeah, maybe. Uh, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not to knock you off, you're carefully escaped. No, thanks, mate. If you were going to add moss, what moss would you go for? Um, I like weeping moss if the conditions are right, because you get this really nice cascading kind of teardrop formation. That's a medium, isn't it? Yeah, it's medium, but it really does well in like, fire lighting. Yeah, I tend to put if in an aspect like well, this, I put it in a lot later because it tends to. I'll oh, see you, mate. Two days for coming. Must be out. Hello, Phil. Why are you true? <laughs> Yeah, so I tend to put moss uh, in a new state after actually it's been growing in for a few weeks once it's got to a bit of a, an equilibrium because moss tends to attract algae and you don't tend to put a load of mono shrimp or whatever in right at the early stage. So shrimp is normally really good at you know keeping it clean, uh, keeping those strands you know nice and free from biofilm, etc. Um, but yeah, I mean, you've got some great examples. I mean, I did actually uh, consider using Monte Carlo in here as well, because not that quite? But I just think it could, it's quite a thematic layout in terms of like, the dark greens and the uh, contrasting with this. And I think uh, too much kind of yellow like, popping out would just be really distracting, so I kind of avoid it. And, uh, the thing is with aquascaping, this is just like day one. You know, an aquascaping is a process. It doesn't have to, you don't have to stick to growing this in as it is. You know, if you're not happy with a plant in a certain position, then take it out and move it. You know, one of the, one of the good things that I, that I like about having an epiphyte heavy 
tank and you're wedging the plants in, actually you can just take them out and move them around. And that's you know that's really useful because sometimes you're you're not really know how aesthetically plant the aquarium is until it's been growing for a few days. So what you think might be a, an amazing hardscape composition and initial planting plan, it can quickly kind of change and the whole composition can change and as the plants grow it has a different impact on the composition and their balance, etc. So what I'm saying is don't be afraid to kind of mess around and, and play with things until you're really kind of happy with it. And in fact some of the the joy the joyful process is the playing around and then making it up better. It isn't actually just sitting back and thinking, yeah, I've done a great job with that, that looks great, and now my job is done. You know, I think part of the joy of all the process of aquascoping is the process, you know, is the messing around, it's making mistakes, learning from them, and hopefully gradually getting better, you know, with each iteration. the story of the colander. <laughs> I've had this colander, uh, I think it's 18 years old now. It's starting to... Uh, but they're actually really hard to find, both colanders. I don't know if you've ever tried. Yeah. So yeah, I used this uh, most from day one of fish keeping. I thought it would be a good idea to pour it into, instead of pouring it into the gravel and I thought that would be a good idea. And, uh, I've had it ever since. That was a quick story. I'm going to swap now for a stainless steel one. <laughs> yeah, so plastic, they're in a very bit uh, controversial now using plastic. Uh, Although that isn't it's single, not single use. It's not single use. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to calculate how many litres of water have gone through that colander. Because it's done it almost every water change and every aquarium I've done at home. It's probably had over a million litres, I reckon, in total. I use it though, it's generally, generally, generally a useful thing. I take it, take it travelling with me. I actually use it, it's useful with my hand luggage. Because I'm really tight, I travel on my neck. And um, I go on with hand luggage. I've got my digital SLR camera in there, I use it as a protector. It's like this, like my packs. Use it as a helmet. Yeah. Use it as a helmet. Yeah. We actually, generally, gen use it for its design for putting waterproof repairs. So you can see the uh, some of the, the white, the glue now on there. So uh, I'm not going to. That's around a bit now, I don't want to destroy anything. Dave's probably on that. Dave's probably on that. I've got the easy bit. Like a towel, George. No, <laughs> I think I am. You're asking me for where we have gloves next. That looks quite nice in the picture. Oh, you can zoom in as well, that's cool. Interesting. I have to, um, I have to set off soon, Dave. Oh, sorry, I have to set off soon. Okay. I've got a dinner party. Okay. So I'm hosting it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Emma's doing most of the hard work, but I promised I'd be back by about six. six. Yeah, I promised I'd try to be back by six. Do you want to wrap it up for the stream? Yes. And then you can, and I'll obviously close it for everyone and stuff. Yeah. But I think. No, I want to you to stay until it's full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'm going to send me this stuff. Okay. Uh, I do apologise. Well, I don't apologise, actually. I, I've other commitments. Um, I'm going to sit down for this bit. I do like a little ramble. Can you get me a, can you get me a beer out of the fridge? Yeah. This, this, uh, if anyone else wants a beer, there's four beers in the fridge.
Am I in this right? Yeah. 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 It's not turning your first place. That's no, nice one. Yeah. So, I won't touch you or anything. <laughs> Safe space. Okay, guys, uh, thank you up to this point for watching. I really appreciate it. Everyone that's come live, uh, travelled very far, thank you so much. To everyone that's travelled Portsmouth, sorry. Uh, very grateful uh, that you've taken an interest in aquascaping more than anything. Um, I'm not... Um, I hit 100,000 followers on Instagram the other day, and I... Cheers. And it made me really think about what is, you know, what's... Why I aquascape and stuff. And I talked already about the three C's, uh, consumption... No, creation, consumption, and community. And uh, I'll do it without my beer, mate. Um, apart from the brand. And it, for me, aquascaping is, is bigger than anything um, that I know or I am or I do. So. I feel really grateful and privileged to be able to be, to be a messenger of aquascaping for you guys. And you know, you, you might be at different um, part, you know, different stages on your aquascaping journey. Um, but for someone that's uh, been doing it for a little while, all I can say it's like it's one of the most joyful processes that you can do and share. And you know, in this kind of very interesting kind of time the world is going through and humanity is going through right now. I think it's really important to kind of connect with something that's really uh, joyful and brings nothing but kind of positivity and light into your life. And for me, that's aquascaping. Um, that's why I do it, and that's why I'm here, kind of talking to you guys about it with hopefully some passion and, and um, commitment. Um, because it, it is, it is like it's beyond the hobby, right? It's it's, it's an art form. It's connecting you to nature. It's if you if you're like a, a design geek, you can really get into it. If you're into technology, you can get into it. If you're into science, if you're into botany, if you're into ichthyology, um, it's got so many nuances and so many attributes to aquascaping. Yet I you know I challenge anyone um, not to be impressed you know by beautiful aquascape. And I think the more people are exposed to this hobby, I think. Um, in its own little way, aquascaping can help improve humanity. And that sounds a bit romantic, but I generally believe that's the case. So cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Now I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. So uh, thanks, everyone, that's watching it for real. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Keep on scaping. Cheerio. Thank you, George.